What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Big D Energy right here on the Woodward Sports Network. The gang is here. Everyone is back, back in town, back feeling good. Yes. My guy, D Mac, Darren McCarty in the house, Joy Bell in the house. My name is Neil Rule. We have a special guest in studio to kick off the show. And look, guys, we're going to get into everything. Don't worry about that. But, but you guys know this that here on Big D Energy, we're about. We're about the Detroit community, we're about the Michigan community, everything like that. Whenever we get the chance to talk to one of the best to ever do it out of Benton Harbor High School, one of the very best female basketball players, high school basketball players of all time in the history of Michigan. Uh, Joy, you know, man, this is is my wheelhouse, man. The media angle of the hoops, Mm -hmm. uh, our guest here today. Se- slap 72 in a game. Se- Absolutely. 72. <laughs> 72. <laughs> in a high school game. Absolutely. We're joined by Kaiser Gundrizic here in studio. The fourth overall pick of the 2021 WNBA draft out of Benton Harbor High School was the Gatorade Michigan High School Player of the Year. Michigan Miss Basketball. Kaiser, whatever there is to do on a basketball floor, you've done it. Is that fair? Um, yeah, I guess you can say so. I have a lot more work I have to do. Well, a- absolutely. As you, as you said, you know things are kind of just getting started to the number four overall pick uh, in the WNBA draft, which, which we certainly will talk about. But we appreciate having you in and uh, the yeah. Benton Harbor connection, uh, the, Joy. The Harbor connection. You know, it, it's it's funny because um, a lot of people know her for you know Kaiser Gondrzik, the the basketball player, but I know Kaiser the the little seventh grader, eighth grader <laughs> playing <laughs> playing junior high ball and then watching her in high school and watching her grow going to Michigan trend. I mean, she is definitely an inspiration and I'm so proud to see how far she's come. And we you know, whenever we get together, we always have these conversations. I had a a highlight of her um when she played in high school. So you can see right now these are a few of her highlights from high school. Um she had a game where she put up seventy two points. I actually went to one of her high school games when she put she dropped fifty on St. Joe. Um, and I had her uh, on my Instagram. She got a little bit embarrassed. Said, Take that down. No, she's so <laughs> humble and she's so quiet for people who don't know her. Like she's really quiet. But she is. Uh, I'm, they would have to put three people on her in the game. Sometimes the whole the whole team. <laughs> it was hilarious. But definitely talented. And she comes from a basketball family. Her father played Absolutely. the NBA. Her mother was all American. Went to college. Played ball. Uh, was it um, Tulane? Louisiana Tech, yeah, national Louisiana champion. Tech. Yeah, and so she she you know, she comes from her her grandfather was my basketball coach. He was a two sport athlete, played baseball and played basketball. Um, her sister, she played with her sister also in high school, who went to MSU, and, and you know, and I give her a lot of credit. But the best yeah. basketball player in her family is actually her little brother. <laughs> you just threw me off. <laughs> 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 I was like, not expecting that, but um, no, I'll give you that one. Yeah, you give me that he, one. he got some shoes he has to fill. Yeah, he has yeah. some shoes he has to fill. Yeah. No, but no, yeah. and uh, and actually, she's heading back today to go watch him play. Um, and this is a surprise, so he doesn't. Yeah, thank he, you, this boy. Is, yeah, <laughs> going. No one's gonna watch the show that goes to high school. So, uh, so she's going back to watch him play today. But no, this is about Kaja, though. This is about <laughs> you and uh, everything you've done. So, question, um, from. We want to real get into it, but from high school, um, I would go back and I'll have my charity weekend. I'll have different events, and so when I have parties, right? When I have parties, still come like, just let me come. I, I'll sit in the back. I won't make. I, I, I'll be good. I won't do anything. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, not yet. And now, you know, a couple of years later, now, you know, she's in Atlanta hanging out with little baby and Jada. <laughs> Look at that big time. Like, how's the experience for you? Like, how are you taking all this in? Um. I don't know like I'm learning how to take it in you know like it's always say it's hard for me to look at myself as successful when I still look at myself in the process of still becoming successful because you just you can't get complacent but sometimes you you have those moments where you look in a room and it's like do I belong here and then you see your the way that you're interacting with those peers that look at you from the same perspective that you do in their field and it's just it's a good thing to to see that my hard work has paid off to be able to branch in and to build relationships and and to tap into other things yeah that's what's up guys I have to ask you um you know growing up and playing and and being a dominant force in high school and and then going through college playing at Michigan transferring to West Virginia all that you know you, you played at such a high level in college as well the day when they called your name as as the number four overall pick in the WNBA draft, what what what's the first thing that goes through your mind? Because I've I've talked to a lot of people, 
you know that that have that happen. I maybe asked twenty different people that question. I've gotten twenty different answers. You know, as, as to far as to, to how that goes. What what was that like for you when you found that out? You had that video. This is what it's like. We got the video for. It. <laughs> That's what it was like. <laughs> no, my question, Kaiser, is leading up to it, speculation or whatever, did you expect to go forth? Was that higher than did they talk to you? How does it work in the in the WNBA draft as it does like um, for example, I went in the second round, I was in the building, it was full Montreal Forum and stuff like that, and it was sort of um, I had that expression on the inside, but I mean it it was that absolute feeling. So you shaking your head, you didn't have an idea, or you were surprised, or how did that process work out to lead you to obviously well deserved and the emotion that was yeah, there? Um, well, first of all, well deserved. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, leading up to that moment, I wasn't necessarily in the conversation. Um, you look at all the on the draft boards, and people had me. I think the uh, like in the third round, almost like the last pick in the draft. You know, that's why I never say, and I tell my little brother all the time, don't pay attention to these blogs and you know these reporters. It's just someone's opinion, you know. And and so when I did my meetings with you know the teams that had connected with me before the draft, Indiana was one of them, and I can just tell in, in that meeting that I had blown them away, uh, away. Not as a basketball player, but the way that I carried myself as a as a young lady. Um, mm -hmm. And it was just, and I feel like they drafted me way more than beyond ball um, because people get, you know, uh, mixed interpreted in the, um, uh, about how ball and your job can affect with who you are and what you do. Um, and so I had a feeling that they told me um, in the meeting that I was one of the four that they were considering for that first pick uh, with their fourth pick that uh, that I was one of the, the four. And so I was a little nervous because I felt like that I wasn't going to be deserving um, for my name to be called. And so the fact that it did, it just, God just supersizes, you know, my life. And, and, mm -hmm. and one thing that I'm learning now is as, as long as I put in the work and as long as I remain disciplined, um, I, I know my GM, she, she writes letters to me all the time. She told me, she said, discipline takes you to places that motivation can't. And after, you know, I went through what I went through my senior year, I just told myself, just keep going. You know, you're, this is what your dad wanted. Just keep showing up every day and hopefully it'll pay off. And look what God does, you know. Yeah. And when you meet him halfway, he really does amazing things. Yeah, you know, great, man. And and you, you mentioned your dad. And I remember that quote you told me, the quote the other night. And, and you know, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly on that one. Uh, discipline would take you uh, farther than what motivation mm -hmm. will. And that's for sure. So, um when did you, your father got you in the basketball at a young age, he trained you, your sister, um, your brother, uh, on and on and on. And you had other people who influenced you as well, from your Uncle Tony mm -hmm. to your mom to, you know, Coach Harvey to Grandma Ruth, Nana. Uh, you have so many people. Um, and when you said well-deserving, people don't understand the story, right? Mm -hmm. They don't understand the story. Um, you had uh, one of your, your your most favorite people in the world, and your your nana who passed away, um, and then a little bit after, um, mm -hmm. right before the draft, your dad passed away. Um, how was that for you? That moment when they called your name, was it like, this is for you, dad? Did that go through your head at all? And also, what type of influence did he have on you? Yeah. Um in that moment, it was just very surreal because he betted on me more than I betted on myself. There, We have videos that went viral um, during the season where I was training with him, and he would call out things while I was jumping on a tire. You're going to be an All-American. You're going to be a top five. Do you have that video, um, Sawyer, and the slack? 
Okay, keep, keep talking. Like, oh, you know, yeah, and um, and it just went viral, and it's just like, I'm a firm believer you can really speak everything into existence. So, and then the year before that, my grandma's just like, invest in yourself. You know, my granddad tells me basketball is what you do. Anytime you try to be anything else, life gets hard. You know, that's my gift. And, and so when I got in that moment and seeing my name, it was just... It was like, this is for you guys. You know, it was it was much bigger than me. And I think that sometimes when you endure so much trauma, it's hard to accept that you are deserving and that good things can still happen to you. Being joined here in studio on Big D Energy by Kaiser Gundrizik, the number four overall pick in the 2021 WNBA draft. Benton Harbor's own uh, high school basketball legend here in the state of Michigan. Averaged over 40 points per game, had a 72-point game, all of that. And, and Kaiser, our, our YouTube people, uh, YouTube channel chat thread that's going on right now, uh, Canuck Duke says, Mom's hitting that praise lap around the house. You love to see it. And, uh, <laughs> you know, that, 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 video, uh, that video certainly struck a chord with people out there but Kaiser you know it's for you you know you made some news as well when, when you made the announcement that you were you were taking a step away and, and you had you had some some mental health mental health things that you wanted to focus on and you know how as, as you've worked through that and you and I were talking and, and DMAC were talking before the show I think we've become such a such like a a, a cut and dry society such a pill based society to where okay you go focus on the mental health stuff all right you're done with that now everything's good now for the rest of the way we're off and running and it, it, and we were talking about before the show is that's that's far from the case it's it's something that's always an ongoing work in progress and, and that's something that you said that, that you found out yeah um initially when it hit me i was scared to admit that i needed help um because given the fact that i have gotten so far without it you right. know, and that I was going to be bigger than than my problem alone and my past trauma. Um, but I think, you know, sometimes you, you, you become like a robot. You, you just train yourself and then you look up one day. So it's like, how did I get here? What's next? Like, and I think for me, I've always went through my entire life just setting goals. And then after I reach it, okay, it's time to set another one. And sometimes you need to learn how to just take a pause before you, you, you consider what's next to come. Because sometimes what's next to come, you have to ask yourself, am I prepared for it? Um, and that's what I had to do. when I, Here I am starting over again, right? So I understand that I can't be the same person that I was during the past four years of my life and consider the same results for the next four years. You know, I have to change. My, my environment has changed. Um, and just learning how to make that adjustment um, has just been huge um, for me and my mental health because I am representing more than just me now. I sit here and listen to you throughout this and I am just absolutely so proud and just blown away and my faith in humanity it goes back to you know some of the, the awful things that are happening around us but the fact is that as young as you are the fact that you can realize you mentioned to me earlier it's it's balance you're searching for a balance between um, the basketball player that's what you do but it's certainly not who you are. And to say, I mean, I just, for everything that I've been through and sitting here at 49 and you're, you're, you're sitting over there at 25, um, gives me faith in humanity. And, and this, these are 24. all the things that um, <laughs> any of us that have been through tra trauma, have through addiction, through recoveries, through whatever it is, when we sit here and we, this is a- Well, you see the, you see the progress. This is, this you, is you, so you, beautiful You know what you do. It's you see the progress. The, right, and it's the stuff that I guess you mentioned a couple things, and it's, it's, it's the journey, right? The oasis. We're human beings. The mm -hmm. destination's an oasis. You're going you're gonna to want, want to win a championship, and then you're going to want to win another one, and you're going to want to win another one. Yeah, I think that the thing is the scariest part for us athletes sometimes is I know for me, at the time I was 23 when I got drafted, and that's when it hit me. I'm like, it took me 23 years to finally hit to the point of my career and to become successful. And then so I asked myself, I'm like, is it going to take 23 years to become successful with the process and the relationship with myself? And I didn't want to start over. I am right. like, I don't want to go through another 23 years. But yeah. then I had to understand that this process, this journey is always life it's never life ending you know it's it's continuous this isn't you can't retire from your mental health you right. know right you so, mentioned a great thing hold on, is that because i knew who d mac was since i was six years old the guy who's on the ice that wins champion i knew that it took me to 46 to realize who darren mccarty was 
right? You 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 got it figured out who uh, Kaiser is, and she's that's, betting on herself right now. Well, that's what you have to do. She's betting on yeah. herself. Yeah. Why why, why wouldn't book, she? Because she kn she knows the ingredient. The ingredient's it. right up there, and the ingredients manifest your reality. If you wanted to you bet will, on yourself, hard work. Yeah. If you wanted to bet on yourself, where would you go? <laughs> Well, D, I don't know, D-Mac, he, he, he went through some therapy. He, he went through some therapy to, to figure all that stuff out. But if you want to get down on, on the game tonight, per se, then I think my bookie is the place for you to go. And why take a chance investing in stocks? We can double your money instantly with my bookie. You can't predict when a hunch will pay off, but you can use the promo code W, or excuse me, use the promo code Woodward at my bookie. We'll double your first deposit all the way up to $1,000. The best part is my bookie accepts everything from credit cards to Joyce Wheelhouse. Yes, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum. You can bet it and withdraw it in crypto if you want to. This Saturday, UFC is closing out 2021 with a bang at UFC 269. I know everybody likes to get down on the UFC fights college football bowl season getting ready to ramp up the nfl is coming down the stretch if you're like fish the gray cup this weekend oh, canadian football wee. league hamilton playing at home you can get down on the gray cup if you oh, want at mybookie.ag don't miss out you can double your first deposit up to a thousand dollars with the promo code woodward head to my bookie today place your bets and watch the sparks fly at ufc 269 this weekend. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. Have a gambling problem? Call 1 800 270 7117. I'm looking to bring out another HVAC tech right now. We are recruiting five to 10 techs a month. We're looking to grow and expand. Every new tech we hire is from Northwestern Tech. The hands on training is fantastic. They're always my first call. We love hiring Northwestern Tech grads. They come out trained and ready to work. Our program is only 10 and a half months, and our next classes are starting soon. So why wait? I'm looking to hire. I'm looking to hire. Hire a graduate of Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. And a miraculous catch. Follow us everywhere. Just search Woodward Sports on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, IG, and more. And more. And more. Off and running here, Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network. My name is New Rule, DMAC, Darren McCarty in the house, former Lions great Joy Bell, special guest in Studio 2, Kaiser Gundrizic, the number four overall pick of the WNBA draft, Benton Harbor's own, the uh, Gatorade Michigan High School Player of the Year during her time as well, dominant college player at Michigan and West Virginia, happy to have her in studio with us, and we're, we're talking everything about her career, about mental health, and uh you know, Kaiser, I think, again, I just want to make sure it's not lost on people when you hear Darren talk about his struggles and then you talk about the fact that you were able to identify what was going on in your life and how you were feeling and all those kinds of things. I get excited about that because we see the progress, right, from when, from when Darren was and how long it took. Look at how far we've came as a society mm -hmm. with, with the mental health issue and everything that's going on. And that's mm -hmm. what, you know, 15 years 20 years oh, i mean but lifetime like yes, you said, yeah, you're but it's a lifetime trying, yeah trying to find different things and 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 it's all about it's about the journey right it's it's all about the journey and the, of where you want to be self-awareness what do i always say is make that relationship with the person in the mirror and and you've done that young lady at a young age and that's exciting and you should you know it's a different feeling again if i was going to relate anything to it it's like you know the coming back in 08 you know and and coming back and playing in the i and the a and and being on winning my four stanley cup with with the team so there's so much more that you might not know but you know that it's there's so much more ahead of you and so my question to you is is as you prepare to get back into your professional career and stuff like this what are some of the things that i guess you're excited about um, or look for, forward to because uh, as athletes, you know, we can only practice so much. You know, Alan <laughs> Iverson said that, you know, yeah. practice. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm at the point in my career now that I'm a professional. You know, I don't have to train hours and hours in the gym like how I would normally would when I was uh, at a young age, you know, because now it's muscle memory. So it's all about just keeping my, my body in shape, you know, 
keeping a ball in my hands, um, just working on little kinks in my game um, that I know I, I need to get better at from just the experience that I had transitioning into the WNBA. And it's just all about maintaining. I think for me, though, the biggest thing that I'm excited about coming back is just my mind. You know, it, it wasn't it wasn't about losing, you know, athletes the weight. It's about losing the weight. And, and now that that's, you know, gone and, and, and I can just be able to go out and play ball free, I'm scared of that because I've never experienced it before. But I commend myself for what I did. I commend you for speaking up because it's important. Because when you go through this process, it can get lonely. Like we talked about, people do feel alone. So I had to make the decision to choose this over my job because this is more important. My, my, my legacy doesn't depict on how many baskets I make or how many assists that I, I had. You know, it was a, it's about how I make people feel. You know, um, and my legacy, how can you take what I did, what, what, what I've done with myself and apply it to you and to the next generation? And that's what, you know, that's what it's about. So I just want to let everyone know that you, you, you're not alone. And if you are going through something, take the time to speak up, and, you know, and to allow other people to, to embrace your journey and make your hardships your brand. But I'm excited to give back. I'm excited to share this message in that space as well, because I think it's important to be able to have that clarity and self-awareness with both my coaches and my teammates. You know what? As you as we sit here and we listen to her speak, you can tell she has a very good upbringing. You think? Uh, and to talk about her upbringing, her nana, um, <coughs> uh, Grandma Ruthie, uh, Grandma Ruth. She, uh, she, I mean, she was a grandmother who would, you know, rain it outside. It'll stop raining. Still go on the roof and try to change the shingles on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> it fell off the roof. <laughs> it fell off the roof. <laughs> you know, and get back up, get back up there. <laughs> you know, but you know, just a, a strong, a strong woman um, who I who who was full full of wisdom. I remember when I was about twenty years old, I was at Wayne State University, and I came back. Whenever I'll come back, I'll stop by the high school, and I'll I'll talk to Coach Harvey, her husband. I'll you know, or I'll speak speak with her. And this particular day, he wasn't there. I went in there. She was in the. Um, she was teaching the PE class, and I walk in the gym. And uh, hey, Joy, come over here. <laughs> hey, Joy, come over here. So I go over there, and we sit down at the table, and we're just having a conversation. And um, like I said, I was about twenty. She said, "You know what?" And she looked me right in my eyes. She said, "I want to see you when you're twenty-five. I want to see. I want to see. You. I, 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 want, I want you to come talk to me in five years. Mm -hmm. Don't disappoint me, son. Don't disappoint <laughs> me." And so. I sit here, and I imagine her telling Kaiser right now, at the age of 20, let me see you when you're 25. And she's not here right now, but I promise you if she was, she would be so proud of you. I still got one more year. You got one I'm more year. I'm not 25 uh, yet. Yeah, she got yeah. 25. No, no. She, she has about she has year, right? seven yeah. months. She has seven months. Yeah. She'll be 25 in about seven months. <laughs> but if it's 25 in seven months, if anything, if it's going the way that we're seeing it right now, which we don't see it going any other way. She'll say I'm proud. She can look at you and say I'm proud. You did not disappoint her. I appreciate yeah. That. yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, so Kaiser, I have to ask you then. You know, uh, you, you know, you took your time away from the game. You know, you, you you said you're feeling good now. You're ready to go. You ready to put in that work now? The the WNBA ready to catch that work from you or what? Um, I'm humbled. <laughs> <laughs> Just me and you talking. Uh, you you ready? You ready uh, to give uh, that uh, word? Hey, okay. <laughs> Cut the screen watch. real quick. Let's, let's have it. So we, cause no. we, have, we have these conversations uh, yeah. now. And real quick, and we don't have the WNBA, but real quick, just play some of her college highlights uh, real quick. Yeah. Some of the play, well, and we're going to keep talking uh, over this. We're going to keep talking over But yeah. the little bink bink, she got that bink bink in a, you know. You yeah. Know. Well, that's, that's why. I mean, but that's what, you know. Pro athletes are professional athletes. I mean, there there is a there is a mentality there. They you guys you guys believe every single player that I've ever come across. I mean, you guys believe you are the best at what you do. Do do you, do you still have that? You still got that with you? Yeah, um, and I lost that. You know, for the first time in my career, I lost confidence. You know, as a basketball player, that was new for me. Um, but I think it was because of just the loss. Right. You know, for my dad, I had. I didn't, I, that was so unexpected, you know, and then to be drafted to Indianapolis and it's so close to home, you know, I'm not in college anymore. I, I have to do everything on my own, you know, like I'm not, the, the, the coaches aren't responsible for, for spending time with me after practice and it's, going it's, in. It's the pros, yeah, right? And, and so, so having that, that void. And I had trained myself the entire year to have that voice. Like after my games, I would call my dad like, okay, what is it that I need to do? I remember after the Baylor game, 
I, I played terrible. In the, in the game before that, I played Tennessee and I had, like, almost a triple-double with 27. Like, and I'm just so hard on myself. And my dad drove up six hours and stayed with me, like, for two days, like, that night and, and got me prepared for the next game. And then, you know, I just – learning now how to do that on my own. You know, learning now how to get up and push myself without that voice. Learning how to tell myself I'm proud of me without looking and seeking that validation in someone else. Like – now that I have that back, I can implement that in my game. And I think that that carries weight, you know, with how you perform on the floor as well. What's your favorite part of basketball? Like, is it is it shooting a three from the corner? Is it driving the lane? I is love it? shooting three. This is the easiest thing that comes to me. I remember I did an interview at West Virginia, and they had asked me the same thing. I, sh I shoot my threes better than probably my layups. So I need to but, work but on it. <laughs> but you see the fluidity, though. It's like your foul yeah, shot. Well, that's, that's, that's why they drafted me. I remember my coach, she would tell me, she's like, come in, shoot the ball. I'm well, like, well, I'm well, Kaiser, <laughs> it's math. Three, three is greater than two. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can so shoot, that's not a bad way of looking if you, at it. If you can shoot a shot and get <laughs> three points instead of two, why Listen, would you not Mr. do that? Mr. Fax over here will tell yeah. you. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not that smart, Kaiser, but I know three is greater than two. So for the same effort, I would take three points also. I hey, believe it's season one and not season one and not, not the, the two. two. Yeah. <laughs> 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 No, but, but I know, Kaiser, we, we, are, we are looking forward to watching you. You know, it, it, it's a WNBA season picks back up, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be watching. There's no doubt about it. Sure. Benton Harbor Zone, be Benton out Harbor there Zone. putting on for the city, Joy. Putting on, she's putting on for the city. And um, are you – and so one thing is I wanted to mention this. Is, so her brother, Little Grant, um, will be up here because he is a monster. So I want to I wanna keep him – she's on it. It's like he loves her. <laughs> So the way she used to like follow us is the same way little grandpa follows her around, and uh, he looks up to her so much. But um, I wish I would have got some highlights of him playing, but because he's next up for sure, for sure. Oh, yeah. He just picked up an offer from Kansas. Yeah. yeah he's doing really oh, a little well. light work, huh? Yeah, a little light work. <laughs> light work. <laughs> light work. So yeah, yeah. I remember we talked about. It. So yeah, he got the offer from Kansas, and that's gonna be one of many. It's mm -hmm. gonna be one of many, and he still has another year. Yeah. He still has another year left. So we'll see. You know, you had it. You had a money base, and now you have Grant Gondrzik. A a uh, <laughs> joint. Maybe next time you you know when the two of them, Grant and uh, you Kaiser, take them maybe they're outside, just you know having a little trash talk after you know Thanksgiving dinner or something. We can get a little video. I'm going one on one and see. Yeah. No. You know what? <laughs> no, 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 I, I would no, no, love no, no. to see. Those. You know no, what? No, we're Grant not, we're not doing that again. No. no, it, no it, they almost got the fight. I know. No, no, they get no, no, no. fight. We have a very we have a very competitive family. So, Absolutely. A very very competitive so you're just so. cutting that off right now right I mean, so. if we were to give you guys that content it would be like you know please be mindful you know it's a graphic video it'd be no, it because it's not like it's perfect material for my show there you go when i sit here and tell you that it's not a you know you're a girl so i'm gonna take it easy or you're my little brother or it's, or you're my little brother I'm so i'm taking it easy him. right and so happened. and so it gets it gets rough it gets physical i, I bet your grants call them fouls yeah. hey, Kaiser ain't call them fouls. <laughs> <laughs> you can call me on that no, stop. Yeah. So i get it I but, get but it. kaiser we appreciate you though taking some time and coming in studio in anytime we get a chance to talk about that and d has been a proponent of it i know you're a proponent of it so thanks for you know, bringing everybody inside your story, and we'll we'll be on the lookout. Where where are you on Instagram so people so people can follow you? Uh, just my name, Kaiser Ray. There, there you go. You got yeah, Kaiser the Ray. Kaiser Ray. Yeah. Oh, they got it up there. There you yeah, go. They, it's right under. Yeah, bring our name play back up. Yeah. So if you look right there. Her Instagram is right underneath. Go give her a follow, Kaiser Um, uh, the one and only, the infamous. Uh, thank you for blessing us with your presence. Uh, it was much felt, much needed. A lot of people, you know, her story is so inspirational and inspires so many from, you know, high school to going to Michigan, full ride to Michigan, to transferring over to West Virginia, um, having success there, and then, you know, being the highest draft pick in West Virginia history. Mm. In the history. History. Mm. In the history. No one, you didn't know that? <laughs> no. <laughs> the highest draft pick from a West Virginia uh, women's athlete in history. Yeah. And, and so, a little digging I did. There you go. Um, man, too. No, I had to look into that. I know women. It might be man, too, though. Honestly, it might be man, too. Number four overall. 
So we'll we'll do some digging. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get you back on the show too, yes, guys. Yes, please. Sure. Thank you guys for having me. Anytime. I appreciate it. Absolutely you. appreciate your time. And remember, if you're looking for a good night out, a good time in Hantramic, the Foling Warehouse, home of the original football bowling pin game called Foling. Host your corporate party, team building event, your holiday party, like Woodward Sports did. You can go on out there, have a good time with the entire office. You can do the ten dollar unlimited open play. Also, they have private lane reservation available as well for up to 10 people for up to two hours they have 100 beers available a two dollar mystery beer vending machine sawyer experienced that caught a pbr out of there that's a hell of a value that's a hell of a value two dollars for a mystery pbr you can't go wrong with that multiple full bars you know what else you can do you hungry you can bring food in with you. You can have it delivered. You can be like Joy, do the Uber Eats route. If you want to do that Chick-fil-A for the squad, you can do that. Everything available to you. It's the best time in and around the city of Detroit. Get your full on. Check it out at FollingWarehouse.com. Hi, I'm David Hall from Hall Financial. Did you know mortgage rates are still at generational lows? If you haven't refinanced your home loan yet, there's still time. Now is your second chance to refinance. You could lower your monthly payment, eliminate credit card debt, or even take cash out by using your home's equity. Call Hall Financial now to get started with your free five-minute mortgage review. 866-CALL-HALL or chat with us online at callhallfirst.com. Make sure you download the Woodward Sports app in the App Store and the Google Play Store today. Take Woodward Sports with you wherever you go and listen live on your phone or mobile device. Back out of here, Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network. My name is Neil Rule. He's DMAC, Darren McCarty, Joy Bell, and the Capitans chair as well. Big thank you to Kaiser Gundrizic for coming through of the Indiana Fever of the WNBA. Lots of positive reaction on our YouTube chat thread. And remember, you can get involved if you're watching on our YouTube channel. Jump in that thread. I'll pick off some messages from there periodically. If you're listening on the radio, 93.5 The Roar, 99.1 FM, 94.7 HD2 as well. And and guys, don't forget about the podcast page. Go to iTunes, Big D Energy. Click subscribe. Big D. Latest episode goes right to your phone. You can rewind, fast forward. You miss, you miss our interview with Kaiser. Roll on back through there. Pick it up at your leisure, as I like to say. But uh, a big props to her, Tammy Chin. Thanks for being a good role model, Kaiser. We appreciate that. So lots of fun there. Michigan Wolverines certainly have been a big topic of discussion here over the course of the last couple days. The stage is set. Michigan and Georgia in the Orange Bowl on New Year's Eve. The Heisman finalists were just posted as well yesterday, and Michigan State fans pretty worked up. Uh, no Kenneth Walker making the invite to New York. Uh, there, there were some snubs, I guess, along the way, but... You know, guys, like that, that's the nature of the beast, though, right? I mean, there's going to be snubs when you're talking about the did, very best of the best. Did you expect him to be on there with the way the season finished out? No. I didn't, I didn't after the Ohio State game. And, and, and the unfortunate part, six carries, he did his job, but they got away from running him. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, you see that Aiden Hutchinson took his spot, you know, pretty much, because the other yeah. three guys, who are the other guys? Uh, C.J. Stroud. Uh, Bryce Young and uh, Kenny Pickett. So you got three quarterbacks. Uh, Bryce Young's made a big case for he himself. He made a big case. Yeah, he did. You know, so uh, it's just it, it, always great. You know, first uh, another Michigan guy. If Aiden Hutchinson wanted to be uh, first since, what, Charles Woodson, uh, defensive player. player. So that's yeah. probably not going to happen. I got I to think looking at it, Bryce Young might win. But it'll, it's always good to get a guy in there, conversation. Yeah. I yeah, just think it was. I just think it had to be the perfect storm to finish. You know, like when when the hype was right there, he had to back it up, and they had to beat Purdue, or he had to. You know, it just sort of petered out at the it, wrong it was, time. It was like a horse race where, you know, he kind of shot out ahead of everyone, and then the field just kind of reeled him back in as, as the time went on. And certainly, you know, he was banged up in that Ohio State game, and, and ultimately, that if you're a running back, Joy, you yeah. you know this, you you. You've had that happen to you in oh, games yeah. before too, where they just, they they you essentially take the ball out of your hand. You, right, and the thing is, you you cannot be hurt for those games because it'll hurt you in this race. Yeah, because it's, honestly, if you look at it, outside of the Michigan game, this was the biggest game of the year for him. Like that game right there, that Ohio State game, that's a big rivalry game. And going into that game with six carries and you're not doing too much, that's going to hurt you in the race. 
regardless of what you did before. Um, and so, yeah, and so you have games like that, and you have a guy like, you know, Aiden Hutchinson. He comes he comes in against Ohio State. They haven't, you know, haven't beat them in almost a decade. And now he goes out there and had, had three sacks, you know. and you know, Balled break, out. Balled out, breaks the school record uh, for most sacks in the season. And now he's in that conversation. He has to be in that conversation. No, no, he's to got be, to be in a – He has to be because a, a guy that's mm -hmm. on the defensive line to have that much of an impact – of a game, you can't just say, "Oh, he's a defensive player. He he, he shouldn't be in it." It's, it's no way we can sit here and say that, and 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 have, um, I guess, and have any type of um, you, you lose your, your your credibility, right? To me, if you say that he shouldn't be a part of the conversation, he has to be a part of this conversation. I mean, and, and you know, certainly there there are going to be snubs along the way too. I mean, Will Anderson, you know, speaking of defensive players from Alabama, had an incredible season too, and, and nobody really talked about him. That's the nature of this beast, where you have to have, and there's a lot of recency bias with the Heisman thing. There is. I mean, yeah. that's that's just the way it works. Like you don't beat Ohio, you don't beat Ohio State without him on that defensive line and Ajobo. You don't you don't win that game without them. No doubt. For them for them to have you know four rushes for majority of the game and have pressure on the quarterback and you can drop those linebackers back in the coverage and have more guys in coverage. The best argument though I saw that somebody made for Kenneth Walker and I hadn't really thought about it this way too was you know some of the Michigan State fans brought up the point. Well, Kenneth Walker, Aiden Hutchinson's on that stage, and Kenneth Walker got 200 yards on that guy with five touchdowns. And somebody posted the picture of. Hutchinson kind of watching Walker run by. But to that, and I would say that is true. But again, it's just it's the nature of this beast, especially now in, in the society we live in. The recency bias has just continued to grow and grow and grow. We see it in the rankings with the college football playoff. Yeah, that's you know, gonna be yeah, that's a good I mean, that's a good analogy. I mean, yeah. that was a good that was a good analogy, but you turn back around and say, you know, he also embarrassed the school that embarrassed you know, MSU. Right, but I, but I'm saying though is like when they went head up. You know what I'm saying, the Kenneth Walker. But but again, that's the, again. I keep going back to it. It's the nature of the beast, man. Recency bias is as strong as it's ever been. We see it with the rankings as well. You look at it with people already. You want to discredit Georgia and dismiss Georgia and say, why are they there? They got beat by Alabama. Who they play? That was my biggest surprise to hear people when they were critical of Georgia to say, who did they play? They played at Clemson to start the year. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like yeah, that but happened. Then people, but but, but, but then then people, are, yeah. the Clemson isn't the Clemson it used to be. You yeah. don't know that first game of the year till it plays out. Like every everybody's narrative can fit the narrative. Well, yeah, you 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 shape things to fit your narrative. But I mean, what what but else? But the can bottom you line do? is, I've been sitting here saying these are the four teams, and we knew this a couple weeks ago. Right. And, and I said I was surprised when they put Cincy in because once they put him in I figured they were locked in at fourth you tried to convince me which it could be true uh, that they would have got out which would have been the ultimate backhand slap but it could have been there the possibility of it mm -hmm. waiting there um, you know when we're sitting here on, uh, I was doing the pregame show uh, down at uh, the Lions game down at the Tin Roof with Maz and Jade from WRF and uh, Ryan and would you be sitting here differently if the matchups were the same? If they put Michigan one and Georgia four and Cincy and Alabama, that they got that. What I'm trying to say is, the committee got the games that they wanted to get, and their put narrative them the, got, they've got their narrative to, to where it is. So I'm going, yeah. the narrative hmm. to that with these teams affects players too. Um, if I sit here and say if Kenneth Walker played for Alabama or. Or Michigan, would he get more of a look? Probably. Mm -hmm. But but again You said who? If Kenneth Walker played for Michigan or Alabama, would he get more of a look? But again, I think it's to your point, how did they end this what have we you done for me lately? What what's the eye test going into the most important games, usually into the to the end of the weekend and you look at the last two games Hutchinson's played? Yeah. And they've been they've been a beast. So yeah. Chuck Brewer brings up a good point in our YouTube chat thread too, where where he says if Heisman was a goal, Tucker should have never pulled him from those games early in the season. What did I say? What did I say after that Youngstown State yeah, game? Did. 
Because that's going to come back and haunt It's going to come back look, and haunt him. And it doesn't matter that he was out half the game. It's just when they look at the schedule, and you're right. And that's you nailed it. That's probably where, at the end of the day, he was a long shot because of that. Because you're not helping his cause. Yeah, I mean, and, and you just do. When you have those opportunities to play those teams and run for 150 or 200 yards, it shouldn't matter. And, and guys, look, I'm with you. It shouldn't matter, but it does, and it always has. <laughs> And it never won't matter because it always does, and that's and that's what it always comes back to. It and Joyke, I know, like you, you fought that battle, I'm sure too, because you know, for those that don't know, Joyke Bell, Harlan Hill Award winner, you know, <laughs> basically the uh, the the Heisman the Heisman Trophy of his level, yeah. you know, there there were there were there were some cosmetics that came into play for yeah, you, I'm no, sure. It was. It's uh, I like I said, I remember going to the thing, and I was up for three out of four years. So my freshman year, my sophomore year, and then again my senior year. But my senior year, I actually made the top three and got there. And we had a quarterback there, um, Zach uh, Zach Amidro. Um and this guy had ridiculous numbers. Uh, it was it was close. I think I had about 30, 32 or thirty three touchdowns that year. Uh, but this guy threw for about forty nine touchdowns, over five thousand yards. Uh, went to the playoffs. I didn't go to the playoffs. We barely had a winning record. I think we were six and four, six and five, I, I believe. And um, I ended up winning by you know forty, about thirty plus votes. But it was it was close. It was close. And I thought it was going to be a little bit closer than that. But uh, I ended up winning it. And it's a lot of plays. It's it's really political. It's really political. And so luckily, I, I played I played enough in front of a lot of coaches. Um, and uh, it's hard to win games. It's hard to win games. You play with a different quarterback every single year of your college career but you know i was blessed and i lucked up and i played against some some coaches in in front of some people who had a vote or who, or who had say so in the voting of who won so uh, mike g says walker need to rush for over 2,000 yards and have at least 20 touchdowns and, and i think that is the flavor that, 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 that he that's would have had and that's why again going back to that youngstown state game and it, it shouldn't matter guys don't get me wrong i'm not saying that it should matter but it does it, you know what matters. You know what matters to the coach is a championship, and he would not forgive himself if he kept him in that game, and he tore ACL, and now he's out for the rest of the season, and so now we pull him out. I remember I had a game where I had seven touchdowns going into the fourth quarter, and they pulled me going into the fourth quarter, and I was I wanted the Gleak record. I wanted that record bad. I wanted to score eight touchdowns and break the record, and the coach pulled us. And the O line begged him to keep me in the game so they can, because that record, any record I had was my offensive line record. And they begged the coach to put me back in. And he said, no, 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 he's done for the day. And I'm like, coach, man, you know, it's for the O line. They want it. But in the back of my head, I'm like, I want it too. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. Anytime you can play it off. But you know who else, what else you wanted? Maybe if you would have told the coach. He could go to coachportland2.com, use WSN20 for 20% off. And, yes, New Year's Eve, Orange Bowl, Miami, Son Haskin, you got some time. You got some time. We're going. That's where we're going, Orange Bowl. So if you might have to stay home and it's going to get the weather's going to change, you might need some lights, some lamps, whatever, for the do-it-yourself or outdoor. So you're prepared for the Orange Bowl game michigan versus georgia that's coast portland since 1919 tell them big d energy neil rule joint bell d mac we'll be right back here with Bruce sports network okay you thirsty little spin goblins i want you to pedal into the next dimension spin it spin spin uh-oh carmen's falling behind let's give her the hiss of shame spin 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 till you bleed don't ride the bike of shame. Come to Planet Fitness and find your own lane with tons of equipment, free fitness training, and no hissing. Join today for just $10 a month. Your Detroit alternative to the normal sports blah, blah, blah. It's Woodward Sports. Sports. 
Off and rolling here, Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network, Neil Rule, Darren McCarty, Joyke Bell in the house. Fish is in the bowl. He's hyped for the Grey Cup on Sunday. Sawyer in the production booth. He's less hyped for the Grey Cup on Sunday. You a CFL guy at all, Sawyer? You gonna turn you gonna turn it on just out of respect for Fish? Uh not I mean nothing nothing no, against Fish in the fish. CFL, but uh this Sunday is actually the last race of the Formula One season in Abu oh, Dhabi, oh. so I will be tuning into that yeah, one. Yeah, but it's yeah. not at nine AM. I'll be watching that as well. Yeah. yeah. We're tied up though. 390, what oh, is yeah. it? 392 it, and a half to 392 yeah, and a half going into the ex- last race. Oh, it's going to be incredible. Woo! Woo! <laughs> First speed in uh, Hamilton? Yes, yep. sir. Last race was sloppy, too. Like, it was bad. They, uh, Verstappen slowed down. Hamilton ran into the back of him. Like, because Verstappen had to give the place back, and then Mercedes was complaining and everything. It was it was a dramatic race. Uh, my guess would be Mercedes complains all the time. Oh, they Indeed, do. they do. They, yes. they, oh, wow. That's really they weird. weird. They haven't lost a Constructors' Championship in, what, seven years? Yeah, They've seven won them all years. straight. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And they complain the whole time, still, oh, yeah. didn't they? Oh, yeah. They still complain. Because, you know, Red Bull's a threat now. So they're like, oh, now we got to pull out all the stops. <laughs> we got to have... We gotta have a flexi wing when that's not look at, allowed. Look at we gotta Sawyer breaking it. down the Formula One. Oh yeah, I'm all about the NASCAR, Formula One, IndyCar, oh, and then wheel. football. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah. more of an IndyCar guy myself, but Zero I do like. Pion. Yeah, I mean, we went through this before. I'm IndyCar, Formula One, and then NASCAR. Sorry, D Mac. Did you watch bougie. Formula One this Sunday, bougie. Neil? Listen, you're all bougie. Are you all bougie. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. Just because I, I like to go like this, Watson. Right. <laughs> sit in a circle. That's fine. That's I like fine. to sit in the VIP box in Monaco. That, that, yeah. That's right. Yeah, right at the right. casino. Yeah. Playing roulette while the cars go by. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but, yeah. But instead of chips, they have those like gold bricks or whatever. <laughs> you know, you obviously see them in the movies. My play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Twenty thousand. <laughs> Two hundred thousand. No. <laughs> but we've been talking college football. Uh, the Heisman race as well. Uh, you know, people upset that that Kenneth Walker will not be in New York. And and look, I get it. It's a recency bias thing, and th- and that's usually the way that it does shake out. But I do have to get your take, Joy and, and Dmex, since you guys weren't here yesterday, just to just to kind of reset. You know, Michigan winning the Big Ten title. They they mm. demolished Iowa, which you know they, we all knew that that one. They rubbing would, off on us, man. They they they're rubbing off on the Lions now. We want a piece of that winning culture. <laughs> we want a piece of that. So we what would we go? We we go out, um, and we we have to leave. We lose it, but we say them we fight to the very end. And you know why they won? It's because I went for the Vikings. That's it, that's who I you was, picked. I picked the Vikings to win the game. Mm, I was down there. That's oh, why they won. That's why they won. No, no I, you know what though? I did have a bit. I, I didn't experience, and I did have to come clean with you guys too. So I'm glad we're getting a chance to talk about this. I wasn't nearly as upset with them winning as I. And look, I'm never going to get upset ab- about them winning. I just, I just want the most valuable asset that you can have, which, which is the number one overall draft pick. That's what I want. That's the most valuable asset. But at the same time, I found myself. I, it's, as everybody got hype and, and Dan Campbell went running onto the field and, and, the, and the team stormed the field and everything like that, I was like, all right, but I'll, I'll give you that one. But how about, we, and I know the moment, right, when they hit it and Goff goes to Campbell and their embrace right there about, you know that you've put everything into, and it goes to show you two guys working for the same goal. You saw it with the with the, <clears throat> Sheila and the... Uh, and her hug of Dan Campbell and their embrace. You know, all the other much. stuff that we care about, right, it, they don't, right? Working towards the goal. So at this time, it's just sort of sit back and go, you know what? They needed this. They earned it. They worked it. Forget about we're still doing the same thing with the clock and aren't getting better that way. But at the end of the day, I watch what we're watching. If you're listening on the radio or watching the celebration in the room, you know, they're all in it together. So who am I to say, yeah, in the fandom that hopefully that this gets them something and, and can get them right. They still got a lot of ways to improve, but man, you know what? They play for each other and they showed it. And the one thing that Neil to, to bring in, what we saw, what I saw with the Michigan team, right, was was a little bit that first, the first drive when they had the ball, that was their nervousness. Iowa missed a field goal, and they snapped into it and went, well, hold, this is who we are. The, what we're seeing in Michigan is what I expected to see in Detroit. 
with the coaching staff, with who he's hired. And you look at Mike McDonald in Michigan, the defensive coordinator and what he's done. You look at uh, Ron Bellamy, you look at Mike Hart, and you look at these former players, really, that Jim Harbaugh has done the job and listened to them because there's something different with this team and this program, right, to do that. That's what we we expected because they were professionals and they were uh, NFL players in the coaching staff in Detroit. Well, because it's at the NFL level and the professional level, it's a little bit harder. But for me to see that, you know, like, like my first thought was, Screw Neil and his draft capital and all this other stuff because this this right here. <laughs> I'm glad I'm is, the first thing you thought of. Is way bigger, right? With, with that, but I also knew. But here's the thing, because you call it the way it is, and I said to myself too, it's not like arguing with Maz, right? Where Maz is head in the dirt, Tom Brady, this and that. You. At the moment, I know you smiled and went, yeah, this is good for him. And to what you're saying right now is this was the time they needed it. And hopefully they can build on it. But the, they deserve that. And the fans deserved it. And and it to me, it didn't seem like everybody was, oh, yeah, but they went for it here. and they, No, no, we won. <laughs> we won. Yeah. It's been almost a year, and we won. We won. And then even uh, I sent Sawyer the uh, – somebody did a Detroit video of Big Sean and stuff. I mean, I thought that was awesome. Yeah. But that's what it's all about, man. So congratulations. Let's enjoy it. Yeah, you know, going down on that last drive, that was, from what I've seen, probably Jared Goff's best drive leading the team down the score of the year. Like, under that type of pressure, going down, making the smart decisions – and, and and leading this team down with no time left on the clock and scoring a game winning touchdown. Joy, what 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 changed with them in the second half, especially in that fourth quarter? And and I'm I'm the untrained eye, right? Like I right. watch the football all the time. It just seemed like there was a total, just a total shift in game plan of what they won. They cut golf loose a little bit out there. Um, adjustments, adjustments. So usually the same team you see in the first half. You won't see it in the second half. Sure. I give, and I'll give you a perfect example. Um, I can't remember who was planning, but um, Peyton Manning was playing, and the D.C. who was planning for him had two game plans for him, one for the first half and then one for the second half. Usually you have one game plan for the whole game, and then you'll just make adjustments at halftime on what you're going to change a little bit differently. No, when Peyton Manning, they're gonna, they had to have two game plans for this man, one for the first when that was over, they threw that in the trash and went to the second game plan. And so if you look at, you know, some of the things that they were doing in the game, defense, um, the Vikings could have made some adjustments at halftime, um, you know, putting Jared Goff in a position to where he had to throw a little bit more. And so um, I think going through the rest of this year, I think we'll start to see the coach start to pick up a little bit more trust in Jared Goff. And I think him going down and scoring that game when the touchdown – put more faith in Dan Campbell to say, okay, I'll start putting the game back in your hand. And I think they'll start passing a little bit more. Because that's, I think that's their only ticket forward, right? I mean, and Dan Campbell said it. I heard an interview he did where he, he came out and said it word for word. He said, why would the Vikings think we could score? That, that, as far as why they were so far off the line and everything like that, he's like, the Minnesota Vikings thought, this is the Detroit Lions. We know they can't score. I mean, he knows it. Everybody knows it. Like, it's not a secret. I know that you guys all say everything right to the media and everything like that. Yeah. But you know what the truth is deep in your soul. Yeah, you know what it is. And also, you, gotta, you guys also think our biggest weapon is, is out. You know, DeAndre Swift is out. He's not playing. Who are you going to look to next? You know, Jamal. Um, and he had a he had a pretty good game, but he had a crucial fumble that we was happy first to get back. First fumble in seven hundred and whatever yeah, his first touches. One. That's yeah. crazy. That is yeah. crazy in That's the NFL. Ridiculous. In the NFL, right? And so um, they say, you know what? Let's put the let's put the ball in Jared's hand. He's a quarterback. All right, let's let's see what we, let's see what we can do now. And uh, he yeah, he did what he had to do. He didn't play his best game. But he played well in times where we needed him to play well. And that's all I want. If he can play like that last drive the rest of the year, that's all we want. Nothing special. Take what the defense gives you. And that's what he did on that last drive. That's all we asked for. Uh, Robert Closia says, Sawyer, I was sent as pit fireman at Phoenix back in 1991. That's got to get you excited. Oh, man. yeah. Oh, if you scroll through the comments, when I've had a chance, I've been shooting Robert a message in the chat every once in a while. 
<laughs> so Primo malone has been chatting him up a little bit. Yeah, he also said uh, when he was a kid in, in 1980, he went to Vegas for the final race, and there were three guys with the shot. Uh, Patrice and Nelson PK said it was wild, and this weekend's going to be something like Yo, that. You guys need to cool it. You're going to get yourself blocked in that chat. If you, if, you guys, if you guys don't calm down right now with all this mess. All, hey, I'm going to put myself in time out as a moderator. <laughs> Pilar was a big open wheel. That, you'd be no. talking about that all lot. And, and it sounds like it's exciting. Oh yeah, it's the, a great. Time. Hey, you know what? It makes sense. The bougie billionaires club coming out of the coming out of the ones and twos. <laughs> well, and me, I'm and, so, you, and I'm yes, soft. That's what I meant. You know, I'm not a billionaire. <laughs> I'm just soft. Yeah, you know, se- self-proclaimed oh, okay. soft. You know, I, I need air conditioning in the in the box. Like I can't be in Monaco in the middle of the, you know, in the middle not of the summer. Your, not with your tuxedo. <laughs> yeah, on. No, you got to be on your on. yacht. You got to be in the bay on your yacht. You know, sitting in the hot tub on the back of the boat. See now, it's yeah, now that's Drinking a little bit some better. Some vodka. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and then and then I'll I'll have you know I'll have a bottle near me mm-hmm. of the gypsy. Yeah, maybe every lap that goes by, take a little shot. Take yeah, uh, you and, and you race. can you can do that with gypsy vodka because it took exploring fifty different formulas and hosting countless taste tests. But we believe that gypsy is the best taking smooth. This vodka on the market is gluten free, corn distilled six times using artesian spring water hey, support hey. <laughs> support local guys from right here in the state of michigan gypsy vodka out of petoskey i roll with it when i'm in monaco on the yacht and i'm sitting there in the hot tub watching some <laughs> formula <laughs> Un. i got the gypsy <laughs> on the ice <laughs> with the club soda and a couple limes because i'm high maintenance and i'm bougie but you don't have to be bougie to drink gypsy you can go to your grocery store you can ask for it by name gypsy vodka as always drink responsibly it's that time of the year again. Time for our second annual Stuff a Studio with Woodward Sports. Last year, Metro Detroit came together to help make the largest single toy donation in Mott Children's Hospital history. This year, we make it even bigger. Stuff a Studio is happening December 13th through the 17th at the Woodward Sports Studios in Birmingham. The children in Mott Children's Hospital fight so hard all year. Now it's up to all of us to help bring a smile to their faces. So while you're out holiday shopping, make sure you pick up an extra toy or two and help us spread some love to Metro Detroit this season. We look forward to seeing you December 13th through the 17th as we stuff our studio with Woodward Sports and Meyer. Woodward Sports Network, let's go! <laughs> Off and running here, Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network, mm-hmm. pulling up all in the second hour Pull of up. the show. And, and look, we gave the feel-good thing, and I forget who it was in the chat thread. Uh, Juice's Ghost says, Dan Campbell picking up the owner is, is making me laugh a little bit. That one did. I'm not going to lie to you, D-Mac. That, that was the line for me. I was happy for the guys. You know what I'm saying? That was just a little over the top. Yeah, but it's, it's not the, it's not, it, it's not the Super listen, Bowl, D-Mac. Uh, it's not the anybody, division championship, D-Mac. Uh, listen, it's so funny how 20 minutes in real time can go from the fourth and one where we gave it up and did whatever and everybody's uh sheila's got a fire oh my god if she even he's going somewhere you hear all the twitter you watch all this then they go down and they win and then you see that he didn't pick her up she leapt into his arms they were excited that was like draft day again right so that's so at the end of the day neil where we're at with our fandom this six-year deal, seven, year, whatever, they're not going anywhere, right? Right, they which, which I maintain, right. Right, so so it's, if that doesn't show you even more, but that's just where they're at. That's how, to your point, do real, does does the New England Patriots, does Kraft come down, does he, you know, yeah, for the Super Bowl, right? <laughs> so it they just are shows different you stops where the you're at, but I don't mind it because it gives us something. At least there's some emotion and some care. I, no, I'm not going to stand on this microphone and say it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life or anything. Like, I just it thought it was a little much. the immaturity of where this organization now, is. It, that, I th- you, you said it well, D-Mac. Here's the guy that talks for a living that couldn't get out the right words, and there you are stepping in, man. And there's a guy who tries to mumble his words <laughs> get him out <laughs> <sit there. laughs> no but 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 you did you did well there but we do have to take a look at it because all right i gave you guys that and enjoy from the player angle you know i was hyped for the players and stuff like that hype for dan campbell all that certainly you know they're feeling good but we do have to deal with the reality What's of what the reality happened out of? there there we go that's the reality of what happened that's in peril now it is. If to the victor we goes the spoils. It. Did but you see my tweet? It, I was hoping for a, 
the most great, the greatest weekend of all time. I was hoping Jacksonville would beat the Rams, and then our draft <laughs> stock would go up. But again, somebody brought it to my point that no, they're way too bad for Stafford to even. It was a get right game for him against the Jacksonville Jaguars. No, so. it is, but they still have you know that that half game lead uh, in the NFL standings as far as the the race for the number one overall draft pick goes. And you know, yeah, for for the Lions. Do you they think, still, my question to you, do you think your attitude, right, is the way it is because that's your game to play with, right? Because that, sitting here, if that would have tied you, see, because to me it doesn't matter because I would rather have the second pick, right? Because I think that... But if, gonna, if they, if they would have if they would have won, if they'd have won that game in Pittsburgh and won today, they wouldn't have the first or the second pick. Well, I don't they'd want, have the third I pick. I know. That's where you get all upset. You get all upset. No, like, I get upset like the second. And I don't, again, I'm not saying, you've heard me say this. I'm not saying, hey, running back, go fumble the ball, golf, throw an interception, Dan Campbell, call a run in a pass situation. I, hope you didn't. I mean, friggin' J- Jamal Williams just laid, laid it down first time in forever. So, I mean, yeah, if you I'm not that saying that. You, the players have to go play, they got to make a living. And, and they get paid off of what they do on the field. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying the coaches do that either. I'm just saying I root for losses independent of the people because the most valuable commodity the Detroit Lions can have as a franchise is the number one overall pick. Be it who they pick, be it do they trade it, all of it. it can we all it gets agree? gets you better quicker. Gets you out of this quicker, yeah. supposedly, well, with supposedly, the right guy and that, and that's, trade. That's not even necessarily the case. It's just for me, can we all agree that it's more valuable to have the number one pick than the number two pick? Right? Right. It's economics. It's it's more valuable to have that. That's that's where I stand with it. The thing for me is I, I believe the Texans play the Jaguars still, so so they're both two and ten. They're both two and ten. So the Texans play the Jaguars. Somebody's got to win unless they tie. Which <laughs> even <laughs> which you know that can never wait. Hold on. Okay. But but somebody's probably going to win that game. So now you're talking about a two horse race with the Lions and and the loser of that game and you know again for me that's what i want to see okay get off my back now dmac you guys got your win okay you got your win here's the thing now leave me alone here's the thing that with the way this team is that 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 you see the defense continue to uh, they've impressed me just because of their bend but no, don't break and just how many p- bad spots they've been put in but they get out there and they they compete um stuff like this but they're out of, now that they have the win this lions team this could be inspiring because they're going into denver and i don't care they're eight point underdog but don't tell them that Denver's, they got Teddy Bridgewater. They're not a world beater. Oh, you go, you so, go from Kirk hey, Cousins. Hey, listen, as, as so uh, before mentioned, uh, Robert Colosia said, we are still alive for the playoffs, Lions fans. <laughs> that that, is, right? that like, is a truth, too. Don't forget that. But but out of, out of uh, Houston, out of Jacksonville, and out of Detroit, I like the Detroit team because it plays together. Right, we saw that in their celebration. Right, so I'm a little bit more worried. I think. Are you worried about the Lions winning a couple more games? Or, well, I mean that that's the natural reaction. I mean, who are they going to beat though? You know, you, you well, start you start going through that. So, you know, are you more confident the, because they're they're playing a tough schedule? Yeah, and and the road games are tough places to win right. at. You know, Denver and, and Seattle. Certainly, they're not great teams. And look. I sat in this chair, DMAC. We sat in this chair together. We talked about it when we said, if you look at Kirk Cousins and the Vikings, they are the prototypical, can beat anybody in the NFL and can and lose can to beat. anybody in the NFL. And Teddy Bridgewater is another guy. He's the exact same thing. He can beat anyone in the NFL on any given day. He can lose to anyone and look bad doing it on any given day. So Teddy Bridgewater concerns me, yes. You know what that yeah, you you just brought that up and I was thinking wow um, Teddy Bridgewater threw some great passes right to the Kansas City defenders he could do that against our guys very easily but our guys can't catch do you notice <laughs> well, that I don't want to I don't want to take that point, chance Anzalone in his hands there was a, there was a couple picks thrown the other day 
that to Joyke brought it up last week, the frustration is these guys got to make plays and catch. So, you know, you add that to the bill that they, they could have had a few more uh, turnovers, that the d- defense is playing decent. You know, com- comparatively, so no, they are, they are, and and, so, and and that certainly is fair. Juices Ghost says if if they tie, meaning the uh, Jacksonville Houston game, we still get at we're they're still a half game back, which they are. But my concern is the Lions tying another game because that would be the most classic Lions way possible to lose a note to go from the number one pick the, to the third pick point, on a tie with, point, without without a win. Point two eight <laughs> zero to point two eight one. Oh, lost by. A thousandth of a point. Which uh, nobody's been able to explain to me the uh, the mathematical reasons b- behind why you get winning percentage points for not winning a game. Because when you tie... you didn't lose. When you tie... Because you didn't lose. Right. I guess, but so you it's did- not winning, it's actually how many of you lost. So really, it's, it's it against out. that sort of thing. It cancels, but I, it I, again, I, I get the math behind it, I just don't get the theory behind it. So you get the math now, you just don't get the I don't get the theory behind it. Okay. Because if you're going to explain it that way, why does it count towards your winning percentage when you didn't win? It's good thing we're not in a lab. Uh, well, yeah, that, uh, that would be dangerous. That would be <laughs> yeah. dangerous forever. Yeah, but it, but it's, it's, like, it's like the hockey thing with me. I'll never get past the point that they get rewarded for losing. You lose a game in overtime, you get a point. I get it. I'll, I'll, I'll never NHL. understand that. So, hey, I, I don't understand it either. All, uh, you know, three-on-three, three-point game. I'm just glad that they go to overtime and do it the right way in the playoffs. Yeah. Right? Which, again, that sort of seems weird. Let's change it. You know, let's make different rules for regular season play. Anyways. Anyways. Uh, AC, Neil, what are your thoughts on Trevor Lawrence? He hasn't shown us anything. There's, there's still hope with the guy. You know what I'm saying? He, he is capable of making some throws. They have a plan in place. And, and I understand what you're saying with that. And there's been a lot of talk, too, in, in the YouTube chat thread. Uh, Joey Two Times says, it's not the number one pick versus the number two pick as much as it's the number one pick versus meaningless wins. And, yeah, I, I agree with that to some degree. And then uh, I forget who it was that said uh, the, number one, the number one overall pick isn't as valuable as it has been in years past versus the number two pick. But it doesn't matter. It's still more valuable to have the number one pick. It's just it's still more valuable. That's the only that's the only thing the Lions can achieve this year. Although I guess they are technically still alive for the playoffs. <laughs> no, I, I think they got eliminated on Sunday. No, they, they've they've come out and they've said the only team in the NFL that's been eliminated from playoff contention is Houston. I don't I don't have a quantitative okay. physics degree, so like I can't go through <laughs> what it. What you need to figure out? Yeah, I, I can't even understand why you get winning percentage points for a tie. So that elim- that eliminates me from contention of figuring well, that out. you didn't out. lose, so it's not like hockey. <laughs> you didn't get points for losing. Yeah, right. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. David says, I always thought the point for losing in overtime was due to them not losing in regulation. All right, so my question yeah, that's is, all it is. So, so this is my question to Neil. Neil, you said the only thing that we can get out of this season is the number one draft pick. Yes. But if we're not dead from the playoffs, technically – we can still win the Super Bowl. We can still win the Super Bowl. All right. A- eggs, they don't make the wow. playoffs, Joyke. Wait a sec. Is that, I thought that limo blew up. <laughs> wait, wait, why did they bring this limo the coming seven, back around? The 10 to 7 limo blew up. I was never on a 10 to 7 limo. I know, but you're on a. Are you on the playoff limo, limo now, Joyke? No, I'm not on that. I'm just, I'm just saying it's a possibility. Oh. If you're looking at the math. Like because if you, pull up the, if you pull off the playoff limo app on your phone right now, it says no drivers available right now for the Lions. It's it's like you're up in Romeo or something right now. There are yeah. no drivers available. You're like catching the Uber. On the yeah, there's a chance the, the, I could golf the, today. The, <laughs> but there's not. No courses available. No courses available. <laughs> yeah, like Joyce got that playoff app on his phone right now. That that blue and green line is just it's just going across and across, searching hey, for you your guys, ride. If you guys did want to bet on it, I'll just go to my bookie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my bookie studios. Go ahead. You probably get some pretty good. Uh, Probably get some pretty good odds uh, going in there. Uh, AC, Neil, can we get some college basketball? Um, yeah, Golden Grizzlies in action tonight at Bowling Green. I'll have the radio call. There you go, AC. Huh? You like that one, D-Mac? That was pretty good. good. I did see Michigan fell out of the top 25, though, uh, in, in the latest rankings. That that lost that lost North Carolina, man. That that one hurt, that one that hurt them brutal. bad. That yeah. Did you see his number one? That kind of shocked did. me. Purdue? Purdue. Purdue. The, First time in, I don't know how long, eight gajillion years. And, and this is as good a time as any for me to jump in with this. Usually I wait till March. But Purdue basketball Uh-oh. is the Iowa football 
of college basketball. Not the Georgia football? No. That you predicted? No. They're, right, by the so way, did score? you get to that about Georgia being Georgia? Was oh, yeah, Georgia we, we talked about that yesterday. You knew at some point Georgia was going to Georgia. Oh, the it. conspiracy theorists would say they just they let another SEC team in to get that check. That's a double check there for the SEC. Oh. But anyway, though, just remember this, guys. Purdue is the Iowa football of college basketball. And right at that time, you think they're going to do something. We know how it's going to end for Purdue basketball because it always does. I just want to – this, ex, this expediated my timeline – for my Purdue basketball chat, usually I save this for March when the tournament comes around, but I figure now is as good a time as any. Right on. Is that right fair? On. No, no. That's the, they asked for college basketball. They gave them college basketball. Nice tag team effort. Yeah. I just wondered is uh, the fact that Michigan is just – you're not making a big deal about it. Are you worried about – No. It's just it's early playing big T. You said North Carolina losing – but isn't, uh, isn't North Carolina one of the perennials? Yeah, I mean, obviously, they're they're always McDonald's, all Americans, five stars, all that when stuff. When do you worry? When when when? Like, here's the difference. So you're with Oakland and Coach Campy, yeah. and this I guess I should submit this to your uh, Coach Campy show and maybe <laughs> ask him. But when you get off to a good start, when you play a tougher schedule, and maybe you don't expect to get off to, does that change your mentality of what the season? has in store as opposed to how Michigan State the other way because Michigan's doing it the way Michigan State sort of did it, right? Where play all the tough games and that'll make you better down the stretch. This is what Michigan's doing in your opinion? Well, I, I think it's different like for for a mid-major like Oakland versus a team like Michigan. See, Michigan's main concern is seeding for the NCAA tournament. So these, these losses may hurt a little more down the road because now you're talking about the difference of being a three seed versus being a five seed. And we know like that 5-12 matchup versus that 3-14 matchup, that's certainly an easier road to navigate. So, I, I mean, if, if you're Michigan right now, your biggest, I guess you'd say your biggest concern is you have Big Ten play starting up. That, that's when I get concerned. When, you, when you, it looks like you're going to finish in the middle of the pack in the Big Ten, you know, fifth, sixth, something like that, that's when you start to worry. Okay. Like if you're 4-3 if you're and three or 4-4 four and four in Big Ten play, then you then you got to start to be concerned. A so little it's sort bit. of if you're hot or you're cold. If you're hot or you're cold, you got to figure it out, Joy. You know what? The only time you can stay warm is if you call Northwestern Tech. Through my experience, have I told you about Northwestern no, Tech? No, no, Joy. Tell me more. Tell you more. Yeah, please. No mind if I do. Start a new career in an industry that is always essential: the heating and cooling industry. If you want to learn more about this today, all you have to do is go to your laptop, go on your cell phone, and type in Northwestern Tech. Edu. That's all you have to do. Northwestern Tech. Edu. That's all you got to do. I like that. You guys like that little hashtag? I do. I, I kind of like that. That's all you got to do. You're just at home. You're not doing anything. You're on your couch. You know, <laughs> call Northwestern Tech. Start a new career. <laughs> and Joy Bell, near rule, D Mac. And this is Big D Energy. Hi, I'm David Hall from Hall Financial. One mortgage myth we hear all the time is having to choose between a 15 or a 30 year fixed term. At Hall Financial, we offer the modern mortgage to create a flexible term that fits your unique financial situation. Our team of mortgage experts are available seven days a week to review your goals and customize a solution for you. Get started today with a free five minute mortgage review at 866 Call Hall or chat with us online at callhallfirst.com. Opinions are like ear holes, and we're putting ours in yours. Well, that's not winning, Joy! It's all about sports. Getting deep here in the second hour of the show. Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network, Neil Rule, Joy Bell, D Mac, Darren McCarty in the house, Fish and Sawyer as well. And D Mac, you know, 12 years ago, today, it's the anniversary of a, of a of a certain date. Yeah, um, some people say that uh, winners never quit. That's not true. Um, I quit, uh, you know, quit the booze and quit the game of hockey 12 years ago today. Obviously, you know, obvi- you know, 11 11 is my uh, sobriety date. Today's uh, 80 years ago was Pearl Harbor. Um, actually, a year ago, congratulations to Joink and uh, Alex and to Fish. Is their uh, year anniversary here with Woodward Sports Network? But yeah, I hung it up 12 years ago. Uh, 
didn't realize 12 years ago today. So, uh, and, and to the point, yeah, I could walk off into the sunset. I was done. I was happy. I was good. Everything I accomplished. For me, it was a little different because my last go, my last hurrah would, was back uh, the, in the comeback season in December of uh, 2007 and being able to make my way back onto the roster and to win the fourth cup. And then it was unfortunate. I was, I was hurt during the playoff run um, in 09, but we lost in seven games. And to me, at the end of that, it was just sort of – I could I could walk away, you know, sort of whatever it was, leave my gear, leave my gloves, everything and and move on to the next chapter. Right? Now and and here's the thing, we were talking to um Kaiser in the first uh in the first hour and stuff like this where where your love of the game has left. Like I remember to me I always used to say we're watching anybody at home watching some fight videos and stuff like this. That used when it used to be fun before the tie down rule. And yeah. Stuff like that when you had to fight the bigger guys and then you had to tie your jersey down so they could grab you and stuff. Back in the day, it was in the late ninety, late 1900s, yeah. it was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. But, uh, you know, and to the fact I heard uh, Uncle Terry was telling some uh, Sun Bowl stories. Oh, God. So, yeah. so, oh, yeah. so, so the late Legendary 1900s, Sun Bowl. Arizona, it was a different time. Scottsdale, yes. Absolutely, I, you it, know, it, so, it was a different time. This is what yeah. you get. This is so what I you... walked away, right, where I hung my guns up, and mm. I was. And here's the one thing where I thought I, I remember walking away, going, "Wow, mm. this game has changed." You know, I, I'm glad. You know, I thought I hands played late. But Put your hands on the D-Mac. Put, <laughs> Put your hands on it. Yeah, D-Mac. Oh, yeah. This is a question that I always got, and I want to ask you the same thing real quick. When you look back at the game, right? You look back. You look back at the game. Do you ever wish or do you ever miss being out there? Do you miss that? Only when things happen on the ice, where I think as the enforcer or think as a protector of my teammates, right? Like stuff like that. Only you. when things go wrong, when somebody gets taken advantage of, or or when I that protector in me and stuff like that the game's changed so much the speed and so like i don't want to play i mean it's not my game because the accountability isn't the same right and and, I, and i'll give you guys a story from we were all out at the game opening night against tampa when when lca was hype oh. and between the periods when we went down to the 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 bally sports set when when dmac was down there the you know, game was still going on and, and there was an incident that kind of dusted up, and, and everybody kind of congregated along the glass, and it looked like some stuff might happen. D-Mac stopped everything he was doing and popped his head up and looked over at the monitor and, like, wiggled his way through the crowd and was, like, locked into the monitor just for the whole, you know, you, you, you could tell. Yeah, you, you, could, te you could tell. Like, it's interesting you asked that question, and his response yeah, so, is interesting because he says, yeah, you know, the game has changed, but I like those situations. Like you, you were so locked in, man. Like, it's probably like a retired is. detective or police officer or something when they're driving in their car and they see somebody, you know, do something that they would have used to pull them over for or something that's wrong. It just the makeup. So the game hasn't changed that way because you want the respectability to be in the game but uh no i mean those are just the things because that's the i don't know the vibe the feeling of the player like that yeah you want to be like but watching it and watch them celebrating like watching them win now and sitting back and i got the perfect seat but it's just when things you know they take an exception to somebody the other night they're hitting guys from behind the islanders were a little bit and there's a couple guys on the islanders you know the matt martins and the guys that you'd be like yeah man i wish i was a little bit younger and yeah. i got one shift left but did you walk away with the tank empty, completely empty? Absolutely. How about you? How about you, Joy? When you left, uh, so I, I had nothing so physical. Take, take question, me through the end of your career. I would man. ask a few questions. So I would ask older guys once they finished playing. We had a guy when I played for um, the Saints. We called him Fast Freddy. He wasn't playing. He was the player. He was the player developer. And so that's the guy that you, they usually have on the team, and he's the direct correlation on the middleman between the players and the front office. And so he sets up a lot of different programs. So I would ask him. He played 15 years. I said, is, is there anything about the game you miss? And um, at the time, I didn't get it, but I get it now. He said, listen, the only people that miss the game are people who got, who got cut too soon, got hurt, right, got hurt, or – 
didn't have what it uh, have, have what it took to to play at this level. So you're saying the ones that didn't leave on their terms, like who didn't like the people yeah. who don't leave on their terms are the people who usually miss the game when they leave. Usually, he said, "Listen, I don't miss the game anymore." He said, "I walk out there on the field. I saw him." You know, I, they still scream my name when I walk out there. You know, he was a little cocky. Yeah. But, you know, but I loved it, though. It was like his, I won't say cocky, but he was very confident in himself. And so when I finished the game, I, I look back and say, like, do I ever want to play again? Uh, and before I, like, officially say I, I'm done, I asked myself this question, like, do you miss it? And when I sit back and say, you know what, I'm content. I'm happy where I'm at. Like, I'm happy, you know. I think the the, the most difficult part is for people who – get into that situation and they don't have like they haven't been working on plan b right plan b or i won't even say plan b but they haven't been working on that next chapter like i started working on my next chapter after my fourth year and then by when i got close to my eighth year uh i said you know what it's not gonna happen everything else has already started up for me i'm fine and so I was able to exit the game. So why why um, were you able to do that, Joy? Why why were you able to focus on and look, I know it's all about staying in the league. And your situation's a, a little bit different. Yeah. You know, you, you were an undrafted guy. You had to prove yourself every mm-hmm. stop you ever made in, in your life. You had to prove yourself. Yeah. Why why do some guys not do that? Where and I get that the the, the thing for you, the goal is to stay. Right. But at the same time, once you get to that point in your career, you're like, all right, I'm here. And you were there, yeah. right? Like, you were there. You had some success. You were, yeah. were going to be around for a while. Yeah. How come you did that and a lot of guys don't do that? I'm talking about plan for life after. You know what? It, it, I never understood that either. But the, the thing is how Kaiser was on the show. She talked about it earlier, being able to live in the moment. I think the players who don't plan for that, they're living in the moment. Um, but what they don't understand, and I feel is, you know, it's not for National Football League. It's not for long. So, when I, you know, right before I signed my big deal with the Lions, I had re-enrolled back in school for my master's degree uh, program. And that was three months before I signed my deal, not knowing if my deal was coming or not. Uh, and then my deal happened shortly after that. And then I, you know, I was basically in Detroit when I graduated from that program as well. Um, and so, but even before that, I was doing programs every off season after my third year. Um, now, I started my third year. I started doing a program after every um, after every season, whether it was an internship, broadcast boot camp, sports media boot camp, um, business boot camp. Every year I would do something to kind of, you know, learn more, see what I like. Uh, my internship, I worked for AD's office and, uh, at University of Maryland because um, I thought I might want to be working in the front office of a, of a professional team or being an AD of a big time university in the future. And I'm happy I did it because when I did it, I said, you know what? Mm, I really don't like it. And I did the sports media boot camp. Uh, it's okay, but I don't really like it. I did broadcast boot camp. Oh, I like broadcast boot camp. I did the business boot camp. I love, I love business. And so you don't know what you don't know until you try it. Right. So I started putting myself in all these different programs of things that I thought I might want to do. But it was a good thing because now I know I don't like that. Oh, okay, I do like that. And I think it's good to kind of know yourself and put yourself through those things so you can kind of start planning on what you want to do once you're done playing. Because if unless you're a, a, a Calvin Johnson or you get a contract like Matthew Stafford or Nadami or Sue, you got to go, you know, you got to go work. Back into the world. You got to go back into the world, whether you're working for yourself Right, or you get a job working for another industry or another business, you have to get back get back out there. And so I wanted to learn learn as much as possible about myself, while at the same time learning what I was good at. So you know, you miss everything, but playing the game, the the dressing room, the locker room. That's where you get the alumni. For me, when I retired, I wanted nothing to do with hockey. I mean, for years, it it just wasn't there. Um, I was done with it. You know what it was isn't who i am now other guys you look at steve you look at dre chelly all these guys that's what they are and they live it and they love it and them watching going to games watching games that's their jones for they're, me, they're life like they're for, lifers they're lifers and that's awesome you know i love i consider the perfect position where the i'm a battery and people are my power and i can buffer between the team and the, and 
and the guys and stuff like this and have that relationship. But for me, it's more of that journey. And I think it's to, like Joy said, the self-awareness and putting yourself in that position. I think more so in 2021, guys that enter the NHL, and this is more awareness and more planning is ahead. Back in the day, we, I mean, <laughs> the late 1900s, you're living day to day, bro. <laughs> like, not, even though you had people around, you are you know, saving money, you had families and stuff like this, but you're just really living this and now and, and trying to enjoy it as much as you can. And um, so I can honestly say, like, to get the love of the game back in a different way is, is help. So I'm enjoying it as much as everybody else watching this next regime. Yeah, absolutely. And, and people got some questions for Joy, too, and, and for DMAC as well. well. We'll continue this discussion when we come back. But, you know, it, it, it's a pretty, it, it was a pretty simple process for you at the end of the career, wasn't it, DMAC? Well, you know what? We like simple processes around here. We're just saying goodbye. And if you're a simple bunch, you don't have to retire. No, what you need to do is get your butt in to Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Yes, we like Sunday football on the field of a tea remote in the palm of our hands. We like things uncomplicated. Lady Jane's haircuts for men. You walk in, you sit down. Before you know it, your hair is game ready. Lady Jane's open 10 to 8, seven days a week. Walk in any time. It's wicked awesome. Woodward, Sports Network, Big D Energy, Neil Rule, Joint Belt, <laughs> D-Mac. Be right back. I'm looking to bring on another HVAC tech right now. We are recruiting five to 10 techs a month. We're looking to grow and expand. Every new tech we hire is from Northwestern Tech. The hands-on training is fantastic. They're always my first call. We love hiring Northwestern Tech grads. They come out trained and ready to work. Our program is only 10 and a half months and our next classes are starting soon. So why wait? I'm looking to hire. I'm looking to hire. Hire a graduate of Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Northwestern tech. Through Friday for Big D Energy Live on the Woodward Sports Network with Stanley Cup champ Darren McCarty, former Lion Joyke Bell, and the silky voice of Neil Rule. Back out of here, Big D Energy Woodward Sports Bring Network, Neil silk. Rule, D Mac, Joyke Bell in the house, and, and lots of discussion here. 12 year anniversary of Darren McCarty stepping away from the game of <laughs> hockey. So it, I, I like this these types of discussions because I, I get to ask those those sports fans questions. And, and one of the questions that you know, the people want to know on our YouTube chat thread, and you can jump in if. Anytime you guys ever have a, a thought on anything that we talk about here on Big D Energy, tap into that t chat thread, and, and we'll get to the comments. People want to know, Joy, you ever, you ever interested in coaching at all? No. Thank you very much, Joy Bell. Appreciate that. No, I, I know, because I don't think people realize no, no, the, I, I, the time commitment and everything. Let me coaching. Break let me break it down. Yeah. On why I, I, I don't want to coach. All right, so being a player, you spend a lot of time I in the locker room. You spend a lot of time studying. You spend a lot of time um, lifting, lifting, practicing, yeah. off season, off season workouts. Even not with the team, but with yourself. Like they see about was it four months out the year when we're playing games? Four or five months out the year when they see us playing from August through January, February, uh, if you're lucky enough. But they don't see like the other, you know, six or seven months. Like the, they don't see those right and. Those are the, you know, whether you're a champion or not, is they're built in that off season. Like even you working hard in the off season doesn't guarantee that you're going to be winning the next season. Like hard work doesn't guarantee you're going to be a champion, right? But it does give you the opportunity or the chance to be able to fight for that championship. And so that's as a player, all right. As a coach, it's year round. You're watching film. Coaches are living in that facility. You have coaches. It who, is your life. That's your life. You have you have coaches who families live in other states, and then they go home on certain days when they get time off. I had a coach who moved. He sold his house, moved his family out of town, bought a cot from Art Van, put it in his office, and stayed in his office the whole season. Come on, that's commitment. I don't have to do that. I don't want to do that. I love football. I love it, but to put in that type of time and commitment, you know, you got to. And, that, and that's what that's you have to do that, because all the other guys are doing that's it. That's what you have to do, right? And if you're not doing that, then do you care about your job? Do you care about this? And then, and then if you go into the season and now you're not winning, right? You're getting out coached. Now they're looking back at that. Oh, you, 
You don't want to make that type of commitment. You don't want to, you know, <laughs> you don't want to put in those type of hours. Coaches are standing in that facility 16 to 18 hours a day. They're in there. And they're going home, sleeping, coming right back the next morning, game planning, like all of that. Because I, I know firsthand. First like, touchdown right here. Yeah. You know, <laughs> my very first NFL touchdown, my very first carry. Um, this is the year that I didn't have a name. And I was just like, who is this guy? This is 2012. And what people don't realize, this is the year that Calvin Johnson broke the receiving record and broke Jerry Rice's record. But what people don't know, the first four, three to four games of this season, I was the leading receiver on the team. <clears throat> no one knows that. <laughs> for, the first, for the first three or four games, I was the leading receiver on the Detroit Lions 2012. Um, and um, all the fantasy players were getting upset. They were like, who is this joint bill guy? Why is he the leading receiver? Why I kill him? You know? <laughs> and so, but no, I mean, the, the time it takes to, to sit back, watch film, and especially on the offensive side, as you're looking at this right now, when coaches watch film, they're looking at, you know, I'm going to talk to you about offensive side. Curtis Mikens taught me a lot about the game. I walked in the office, I said, Coach, now when you watch film, like, what are you looking for? What are you looking at? And he said, I'm looking for weaknesses. And I said, break it down. Like, Show me what you're looking at right now. He got it down, and he was showing me um, the grand scheme of a defense because I'm an offensive player, and I can read a defense. I know, I know what coverage it is. Um, I know what they're trying to do. But he, he helped me to see the bigger picture, right, how to make a pre-snap read. You know, you see a, a safety walk down, but you see, um, you see a three technique right there. That, that safety walking down, he's not blitzing. He can't. There's nowhere for him to go. Because usually when you're blitzed, you're blitzing, off a, you're blitzing into a hole off the edge. And so he's like, listen, he's walking down, but what hole is he going to fit in? He can't blitz. He can't. So don't worry about him. Look over here. And so he'll run the play before he even watched it. And that safety's dropping back. And that, you know, and, the, and you, you have that backer coming from the opposite side. You know, so go get your, you know, understand your assignment. And so this is how you get your pre-snap reads, by understanding the defense and seeing the bigger picture. And um, my my question is, so when it comes to live action in the game and you've done your work yeah. and you've done your pre snap and the ball's going to you and you see like, can you see it develop before it develops? Yeah. Like, do you know you're going to break one or say they call, I don't know, left power left or whatever oh, yeah. like this? I, I can tell you we had a play where we playing Tampa Bay. I had about a 57 yarder when I broke through the. Uh, when I broke through the offensive line, past the D-line, and I saw the safety coming down, I knew the angle he was taking to come to, to make the play wasn't a good angle. And I knew if I broke this tackle, it was going to be a long one. Like, I knew it. Yeah. So um, he, uh, he took a bad angle. I was able to uh, break an arm tackle. Uh, and then after that, I just hit it right down the sideline and got like a 57-yarder. But I saw that play developing. Yeah as I was running. And then once you do it enough and you watch enough film, you can see um, a lot of things happening and developing, um, which is a lot of fast guys who play running back, that's usually their problem. They're so fast that they don't let the play develop. And they'll get there before the play develops and they might end up getting sacked and a, a, a 20 yard carry or, or a 50 yard carry turns into a one yard loss, you know? And so uh, I just didn't have that long breakaway speed that wasn't my game but you get me the ball inside that 50 um that 50 yard line going on in like i can I, you know i can i can hold that speed i can get up to top speed and hold it you know to get to the end zone um but for the uh, for the most part um the more the, the more you watch film you don't really have time to think when you're on the when you're on the field you really only have time to react you know you don't you see colors you react when i'm running the ball i see color I see that color coming inside out. I can't see the number. I just I, I just see the color of the jersey. And um, when you're out there, like your reaction time is the matter of life and death. Like yeah. you know, this like you know, win or lose. You know, and for a lot of guys, when you lose, there's gonna be a lot of furniture moving. A lot of guys getting fired. A lot of guys are going home. So it really is a matter of uh, a life and death when it comes to like your livelihood and what you want to do. And so um, watch the film and like even on this particular play right here. Um, New York did a great job with the crashing down, but what happened was 
um, that Ian, who was supposed to stay in that hole, he didn't trust his teammates, so he spent out. And as soon as he spent out, I spent back in. And so if you just play that play back, this kind of that's just me reacting to what he's doing. Right. I'm replacing him. And so if you watch this play in slow motion, he spins out, I spin in, I'm right there. And he blocks for you, too, because he's no. out of position. You see how, how the out, end yeah, blocks yeah. the defensive so, back for you. Yeah, so he blocks the defensive back because, honestly, that defensive back is supposed to – it's supposed to be one-on-one -on -one with me and him. Come on, bro. Yeah. Do your own job. But what <laughs> happens is he doesn't trust his guy to make the play. He wants to make trust the play. Trust issues. Then yeah. he gets out of place and not replace him. Right. So um, With a blocker. Yeah. That's him. That, so, that's what's amazing about the game. So I, he, And that's the part of the game that once you keep continue to play, you, you're not thinking. So I'm not thinking about doing that. I'm just reacting to what he's doing to get me into the end zone. And so it's a good play. And I think it takes a lot of time and a lot of practice to kind of get that that keen sense of what is the defense doing uh, and how can I use it to my advantage without thinking about it, just reacting to it. And honestly, it, it really is a gift. Not a lot, of, I, a lot of guys don't have it. Some guys do have it. And I was blessed to be one of those guys who was able to kind of develop that, um, that keen sense as I continue to play the game. Yeah, it is. It's amazing, too. And, and that's why, you know, we, we go off on these sometimes where we get that opportunity. And with DMAC 12 years ago, stepping away from the game of hockey, did, did have kind of one final question. I do want to get into uh, uh, the Red Wings and the Pistons. Kate Cunningham had a great quote uh, after the game last night. I don't know that a lot of people saw it, but uh, I, I do want to bring some light to it. But I do have to ask you, DMAC, where we know your journey, we, we know everything that happened. You know, you go out to Calgary. Then you come back, and you basically start over. And, and this always amazes me because I think about this. I give you a lot of credit for it. I give a lot of people credit that do the similar things where you come back from Calgary, you're a multi-time Stanley Cup champion, and they say, this is the road. You got you to gotta go through Grand Rapids. You got you gotta to prove, you prove yourself all over again. Multi-time Stanley Cup champion, 50-goal scorer in the OHL, done everything that you can do in the game of hockey. Why yes? Let's why was the answer it. yes? Because it was. The, I live by one of the things is who would do, uh, who would do that? Don't tell no. me what or you know the don't tell me what tell me who, but it's what do you put it in to get out? And the thing is always no what if. How many guys you grow up with? If I would only done this, and if I would only done that, then I would have made it. So. Drop always. that and go do it. It's always that, Go bro. do it. So yeah. I'm the one that's, you know, I'm going to tell you I'm going to do it twice. So it was to prove it to me, and it wasn't the payoff. The story is the, the, the payoff, the fact that, that it ends up like Rocky. You know, and it ends up winning the championship, but it was a journey because whatever it takes, I tell everybody, and again, going back to Kaiser's, the hard work and your priorities. So you tell me what I have to do. I'm going to do it to succeed. I wanted to get back, and I knew what I wanted to do. Did I know Did I know if I was going to get injured during the way? Did I know that? Did I have anything left? But I was going to throw everything out there. So at the end of the day, if it didn't, if maybe I didn't make it out of uh, Flint or whatever else, at the end of the day, then I would have wrapped it up and said, okay, then I, you know, then, then I can get back to being upset about things I did in the past but where does it change anything so it was just i was well it was almost yeah the more i gotta do to prove it to you that i'm gonna do it that's what it was and the way that it worked out the ihl ahl then the nhl and like i said it's uh you can't it's a movie script but you can't there's a there's a few of them in my life <laughs> yeah, yeah so, it just it, it is it because because it takes a certain kind of dude to do that you know that that was at the mountaintop and go all the way back down. But you're not there, and you know what? Like that's the whole thing. So I had more to prove, and I'm proving it because it's about to show everybody that I like to show. I like to prove people wrong, and I like to. And then I like when people they say, "Oh, well, I can't do that," and I'm like, "Oh, really? <laughs> that's stupid." Manifest your own reality. Look what I've been able to do with all these different things. So, as an example, it's just who I am, and it was proof to me. That one was for me. You know, more so for, for Darren McCarty, the person, to show that, that you can do it through everybody, the thing that you've been through and, and stuff like that. And, and here's the kicker, right? It's all about the journey because you're supposed to ride off into the sunset 12 years ago and make everything right. Well, no, that's not the way life works. And it took six years of, of deep, dark, um, keep falling in the ability. But, but again, there's another proof that you can get out of it. So they're all just journeys and, and something that... 
you know, I, I'm very proud of because, again, it's about I'm not afraid to put the work in no matter what it is. So I, I agree with that. AC says we need a D-Max statue downtown. No, <laughs> yeah, D- no, D-Max wisdom. <laughs> Give it a free game. <laughs> uh, and Woodward Sports has you covered for the Detroit Lions pregame and postgame. The Tin Roof, downtown Detroit, 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock this weekend, this Sunday. I'll be down there. We're Braylon Edwards, Jade from WRIF, and more. We'll host the pregame live on Woodward Sports at 101.1 WRIF. <laughs> Jose Cuervo making that one happen. And then the post game. You saw it last week. You saw a stick down there popping bottles, uh, popping bottles. and making it rain. Uh, did anybody make me the... Uh... The side-by-side sticks reaction to the Justin Tucker field goal of the <laughs> agony of defeat, the thrill of victory. I mean, it's the dichotomy of being a Lions as well. Yeah. I was so happy for Stick. He almost didn't know how to. He almost didn't know what to do with that champagne <laughs> bottle. He didn't know what to do with it. it was, hey, listen, I'm gonna. The fact he was inside the brass rail and didn't want to like pop tops. I get it, but he. Yeah, you know what. He could have done a better job getting that thing going. Uh, he, I'm he, just saying. He could have. But maybe that's just me because I've done it four times. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe maybe Stick learned some lessons, and you can find out if he did down at the Brass yeah. Rail downtown this Sunday for the Lions post game show. Brought to you by Jim Beam. They'll start streaming right at the two minute warning, so you can jump, you can tap right in, as Joy would say, and experience it in real time to get the reactions, the crowd interactions, all of it. There's a DJ, drinks, Woodward Sports VIP section with food and more. Make sure you stop by after every Lions home game at the Brass Rail Detroit, the official spot for Detroit football. Fellas, football season is here. It's time to make your grooming experience easy like Sunday morning. Get to Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Walk in, relax, watch your favorite team play, and before you know it, your hair will be game ready. Get to Lady Jane's, open 10 to 8, 7 days a week. Walk in anytime. It's wicked awesome. Make sure you download the Woodward Sports app in the App Store and the Google Play Store today. Take Woodward Sports with you wherever you go and listen live on your phone or mobile device. Coming down the stretch here, Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network. My name is Neil Rule. He's D-Mac, Darren McCarty, four-time Stanley Cup champion, retired from the game of hockey 12 years ago today. Joyke Bell, he scored a lot of touchdowns. You saw that in the footage. I mean, that, that was a long video. Man. A lot, there's a lot of tutties uh, being that, put on the board. Was that off of YouTube, like, every touchdown, I, uh, every touchdown I've ever, like, ever had in my career? Yeah. That, yeah. Dang. <laughs> yeah, somebody just made a super cut for you. That's yeah. dope. That was pretty dope. Joy yeah, Bell Fish dope. is in the house. He's over there in the bowl getting hyped for that Grey Cup final. Sunday, Fish, it's coming up soon, man. Hamilton, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Whoa. Who you got? Who you got? Oh, Hamilton. But they're not going to win. It's probably going to be Winnipeg. What's the? Have you seen the line? I gotta check my bookie and see I what the line is. I've not seen the line. It's probably gonna be six or seven. Okay. Just based on the game they had in 2019, which I know you can't compare that, but you know. I got you. It was a 20 I got a favor, though, game I got a favor to ask you real quick, Fish. Do you want to ask the people to make sure they hit the like button on the show so we can get to 100 likes for the show? Can how, you, how many are we at? We're at about 52. We're trying to get to 100 plus. So uh, everybody, everybody, take the, just take five seconds. The Hamilton click the like button. Uh, like Tiger Cats the video. Like it, yes. Yeah. Are a two and a half. Oh, plus two and a half. Okay. So the Blue Bombers are bad. minus two and a half. So they expect. I like. I a like close Winnipeg. Game. It could be a rouge fest. Oh. Yeah. One point here. Punt. <laughs> Don't get it out of the end zone. Punt. Yeah. Love the good old rouge. Yeah, I I do too. Uh, I my, my, early, my early movement is I'll take Winnipeg laying the two and a half. Don't take it at three. Get it Ooh, at the two and a half. He loves this hook, guys. He loves uh, this hey. hook, especially when we don't have to buy it. Yeah, absolutely. It's a free hook right now. Free hook. I like it. It's a free hook right now. That that's my that's my early return. Are you uh, you're watching, right? You hundred percent. Okay, good. I mean, I have to do uh, I have to do Lions pregame, but when I yep. get back home from that, I'm tap I'm tapping. Well, it starts at, it starts at six, technically six thirty. Perfect. Because they do all the pre festivities. Stephen Lee Olson's doing the pre match entertainment. Oh, I, I never miss an opportunity to catch Stephen Lee Olson. And then our Cals are doing the halftime show. They're a big band in Hamilton, so it's just which is a band? Our Cals. Okay. Oh, of course. Never miss them. I never heard them, so I never miss them. You get you get what I'm saying, yeah, right I, there? No, I do. Yeah. yeah. All right. I just wanted to make sure, Fish. Um, 
Red Wings in action tonight. They're red hot. They're taking on Nashville Predators. Pistons lost yesterday to Oklahoma City. I like how on our on our uh, prep sheet there it says Pistons lose to the team that lost by seventy three. Um, that's not what's newsworthy to me in all this because this isn't wholly unexpected. It's as we talked about earlier on in the season. They are the exact same team from last year, except. You know, they have Kate Cunningham. Like, that's the only difference. Kate did his part, though, scored 28 points, had 12 boards, six assists. But what caught my eye with this game wasn't anything that happened on the floor, it was in the post game. And I know we have the, the quote, and I saw this from Rod Beard, uh, who covers the Detroit Pistons originally. He said, I'm not going to let a couple of losses change my mindset on how much I hate losing. And he was aggravated last night not not you know not with the teammates or anything like that not saying hey i had 28 points you know that's i i had a good game or anything like that that's the first step dmac i think we saw with cade cunningham having the keys to the car you know what i'm saying no it's the mature what have i been saying all along you know and you know uh forget the the kid who went second overall we don't bring up his name in houston but the fact of the maturity of kate cunningham not only seeing it in putting up you know his career high in points but it's how he acts off the court and the fact that he doesn't like losing and he's not used to losing and stuff like this and it's just not we were talking about me last segment or whatever like the comeback and about proving it this is who he is right and when you hear maturity from a younger guy we heard maturity from a younger lady um in kaiser earlier on in the show who's who's playing in the WNBA. you know these young kids coming up have these maturity and you could see why he is the guy and when things like this come out I mean, uh, yeah, okay, it's just, is it disappointing? Does it give you a head, little bit of a head scratch that a team in the NBA that lost by 73 points and you lose to them, does that sit right? No, but where we're at right now, when after this comes out and he comes out, because this is who he is. It's not lip service, not somebody reading a script. This is him telling you who he is slowly but surely, and every time he's come out and spoken where it has to deal with maturity, he's knocked it out of the park because that's who he is. And it makes me feel good like you. So yeah. it's like right now at LCA, th the big show is the Wings. Obviously with their three-headed uh, rookies and uh, Nadalkovich, Raymond, and Sider with what Dylan's doing. That's the party. Let, let these guys right now, like you said, the only difference is Cade Cunningham. But let's figure this out. The more they play together, the more they learn how to play together. He's another one of his quotes. So... Where they're at, I like this maturity coming out of that. I, I, I like that's what I'm seeing. I'm not seeing the wins and losses, but I'm seeing the maturity because then the wins and losses will follow. Uh, Canuck Duke in our YouTube chat thread goes down the Joyke Bell Road here. He says, Kate, it's what the Pistons need. It's on the rest of the team to tap in to that mentality. What do you got on that, Joy? They need to tap in? Yeah, I was at the game last night, and the thing for me is not even tapping because they, they're there. It's just holding on to the, holding on to the league and, and having that fight. Um, towards the end of the game, like you have the young guys who have that mentality from Beef Stew. I'm not gonna say like Beef Stew is he's tapped in, and he's playing hard, and you can see that effort. It's like we had a double digit lead in the third quarter, and then we lose in the fourth quarter, and then just like we turn into a different team. Like what is it? Like what are we doing? Are we slowing down? Are we not picking up? Uh, is it miscommunication? I don't know what it is, but to, I definitely thought that was a game we should have won last night. No, I, I, I would agree. Uh, a team that has been doing a lot of winning as of late with the Detroit Red Wings. They'll host Nashville tonight. Been a been an extended, you know, run of home games for them, and, and they've delivered, D-Mac. Well, I mean, you, you go back and you look, and I remember sitting here going, man, the inconsistency of this team. And, and here's the one thing. They had a five-game winning streak right now, like home and stuff, and they have not played a 60-minute game. Right. They've played close to it, but they're doing things to win games that this team couldn't do in the past, finding ways to win, especially in overtime. You know, most Sider um, Saturday night with a cannon uh, blast to, to win an overtime, but they're, they're getting those points. You mentioned, you know, the, the NHL with the three-on-three, -three, the overtime rule, the three-point rule where you make it, you get a point and stuff. So they're out there. It makes it so that... Uh, 
It's a very competitive five or six teams. We don't know who's coming into the playoffs the last week, but that's the NHL we're dealing with. But the Wings right now are playing well. Now, they have games not in hand. They've played more games than most teams in the league. But when you get your points and you're winning and especially take care of home ice, that's where they've played well. That's where the fans, and they play well in front of this uh, LCA fans. Now we just got to work on consistency and get that record up to 500 on the road. But the goaltending has been there. The, you know, the, the goal scoring has been there. They've found a way to win games, doing it different ways, different guys stepping up. And, you know, these guys are led. I said this how many times? I, You know, it's going to happen. When is going to happen? Uh, me, four or five years. Well, four or five years is what I think, but if you keep hitting on your 19 to 20 year olds, it's going to be a lot sooner than that. So they're in a good spot. Everybody's in a, in a good place, but they, they're battling consistency. And when they figure out how to play that 60 minute game, whether home or away, that's, that's when teams really won't want to play them. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's got you hyped about the wing wheel, doesn't it? DMAC? It really does. And everybody else should be. And you know what? Uh, like, cause this is the best way. I mean, everybody gets it. Everybody gets it. But it's about defense, right? And it's about keeping a puck out of your net. The more you keep it out of your net, the more goals you score, the more you win. Well, guarding alarm, guys, you know that they get it too. Jason and the good folks over there know a good defense on and off the field helps you feel secure, whether it's residential, commercial, whatever it is. Guardian Alarm is state-of-the-art technology that helps you feel safe, all with 24-7 local monitoring. Guardian Alarm also has made convenient features to let you check in right from your phone. You can you know your lights your temperatures your sm uh, smoke in case there's a fire and that deadly silent killer carbon monoxide even oh. unlock and lock it no matter what so if you want to get on board with the woodward sports network family big d energy give us a call 1-800 stay, stay out. out that's 1-800 stay, stay out, out sky force yes stay, stay out now one more time for everybody in the back it's christmas season make sure they know guardian alarm call 1-800 stay, stay out, out. Get, get out of the house it's christmas get away. Time. Get stay out. Out. that's silent killer don't fart ho 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 Ho, ho, ho. Guardian Alarm has been trusted yeah. for over 90 years of keeping families safe. And they have a special Santa down the chimney thing. So give them a call today, <laughs> Guardian Alarm, up. your local security experts. Make sure you tell them, Fish sent ya. Stay out. Woodward Sports Network. We'll be right back. Get out. Okay, you thirsty little spin goblins. I want you to pedal into the next dimension. Spin it. Spin. Spin. Uh-oh. Carmen's falling behind. Let's give her the hiss of shame. Spin! Spin! Spin till you bleed! Don't ride the bike of shame. Come to Planet Fitness and find your own lane with tons of equipment, free fitness training, and no hissing. Join today for just $10 a month. Put on a show here and that's how you answer. We love our sports. We just wish they'd love us back. Detroit Sports for Detroit Sports fans. Woodward Sports. Final segment of the show. Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network, Neil Rule, DMAC, Darren McCarty, Joyke Bell in the house. The back up in the heezy, baby. Um, the sheezy, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Just coming down the stretch. We got a DMAC wing wheel video to get to, too, don't we? Oh, yeah. DMAC was on one, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. I was on one? Yeah. yeah. Let's, Let's see. You ready? Yeah. Let's check it out. They don't, they're not out on the ice in overtime. Oh, I'm a rookie. I'm a rookie. No, they're giving me that biscuit. I'm going to bury that biscuit. Scores! Lucas Raymond! Sider wins it for Detroit! When a goalie makes a save like that, that's like us scoring the goal. There's the break and oh. oh, what a save by Nadelkovic! Did you see the saves he's made? He makes Ned's save. When I saw that, uh, it was just kind of jaw dropping. I mean, it's put yourself in that position. It's like it's tough. Another block! Craziest sequence I've ever seen. That, that was that was a little trailer for D Max appearance in the winged wheel. You, it makes it no like I know what I'm talking about. 
right? Give it to the young guys. <laughs> I mean, and that was shot before Sider went cookie jar one time or last game. But uh, So give it a watch if you get a chance. Where can it, they catch that at? Yeah, it's, uh, that, that's a Detroit Red Wings production for the Wing Wheel Nation. I think that uh, you saw Ken Cal and uh, Jimmy Howard and stuff like that. And we were all just talking about from – from a perspective from guys that have played, you know, what's it like to watch this young group? And the one thing that I always mentioned, and I said this to Kaiser earlier, but the destination is an oasis. It's an oasis. It's about the journey. Let's enjoy the journey. And I think right now that's part of it. And what we saw there, whether it was blocking shots, scoring goals, and overtime, some of the saves by the goalies, this team's all in it together. And it's something special. And I know that we're going to be talking about this what what we saw this season how it's a step in the stone to things that are coming in the future but future's bright down at lca great team to watch it's 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 a different atmosphere than it has been you know and winning does that but it's also the group uh people on the youtube chat there mike g says isn't nickelback popular in canada why isn't nickelback doing the gray cup fish i don't know well our Kells is a local hamilton band so it makes sense that they're doing it having that- them not hosted the gray cup in what the 25 years did you so, see the Barstool Sports me. Arizona Bolts having Scott Staff from Creed do their uh, do their halftime show? Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, and, Tell me you want if if I remember, I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna tune in for that. I'm gonna turn. If that you on. remind me, uh, write that. Put a special <laughs> asterisk. So we just gotta watch the half halftime. From, from now on, on all our bowl game graphics, we gotta put <laughs> under the Arizona Bowl <laughs> Scott Staff from Creed. <laughs> <laughs> he made that banger about the Florida Marlins. So, you know, that is certainly there. Real quick, too, I'm, I'm seeing Brad Holmes catching a little slander in, in the uh, in the YouTube chat thread. And uh, Bob's big boys talk about Paraman's contract. Uh, you know, they gave him $2 million guaranteed, so it basically gave him $2 million donation because he played zero snaps. And that, that was a controlled gamble. And, and I see him taking some criticism, too, about not having a kicker. Guys. We got one. Guys. This is the long game. What point was there giving Prater three to four million dollars to be a kicker for this team? What what point was there? No, isn't it? it did, None. Does this it kicker is. not? Does keeping Riley him, keeping him around? Does Riley Prater? No. Why does, don't you? So you tell me you, you didn't want Prater here because you didn't want to pay him money? Right. That's exactly what. Because no. why? For no. what? Because he's one of the best kickers in the league. So he, so he's gonna so he's gonna you're gonna win three games in, in instead of one. It doesn't matter what you're winning. It doesn't matter what you Joy. It does if you're building. It's a long you're game, Joy. You said long game, right? Yeah. Predator's going to be playing for the next five, six years. Yeah, but your long okay. game. Okay, but then you, get, in the then, then you can go get him when you're good then. Yeah. Huh? You go get him when you're when in a season when you're not going to win one game, Joy. Like, they know. They all know. And, again, for Brad Holmes, for me, it goes back to it, and I'll put, I'll put Sawyer on the spot a little bit, the draft class, man. That draft class, Joy, all played all made big plays, and this tweet comes to us from devoted to det on Twitter. That draft class right there on that screen, all played, all had an impact. Amon St. Brown was maybe the best player on the field let's, in that game. Let's talk. Is, 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 no, let's no. talk about undrafted cornerback free agent Jerry yeah. Jacobs too. We talk about him. You know, like the guys that they have it, they hit on. I trust so. what that man does is, um, implicitly. So would you put St. Brown as that number one receiver right now? The last four games, he's been the leading receiver out of two of them. Yep. And he's a fourth round pick. Ten fourth catches, round pick. First yeah. touchdown. I will never Game question one. anything Brad Holmes does. Nothing. This is what he does, though. And if he and, doesn't want to sign a kicker, Joy, yeah. for a one win team, I'm cool with it. My biggest my biggest I'm not gonna say biggest concern. My biggest thing was for the people to understand, if you look at the people that he drafted, <laughs> everyone has been productive. They're all on the stat sheet. If he has two more draft classes like this, we got something cooking. Million and then, percent. Hold up. We got something cooking and t- like two more drafts like this. And then when we free up money after next year, right, after next year, and we go out there and get more free agents. 2023. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm, I'm serious. I'm I know. Serious. No, that's too. If you want to catch Big D energy and go back six months or four months or three we months, about this. we've been yeah. preaching this. We, we've been insane. preaching this over and Hashtag over and over. 2023. Just think about it. Cause that's that, and, yeah, and, and, and don't let I one do. of our coaches that I we picked up. Think about one, don't let one of our coaches go to another team and be a head coach. Now we got more draft picks in the third round. Joyke, I'll go so far as to say because if so, if you could pull that draft class up one more time, I'll go so far as to say, if you have one more draft like this, 
one more draft like this because you're looking at you know, Malafamu got hurt. You're looking at four dudes. Derek Barnes is, is making a little bit of an impact. You're looking at four dudes making a big impact with the fifth guy <laughs> making somewhat of an impact. If you have another draft like that, now you are now you could yeah, be running with something. Wait, so what, guys is, what, what this guy you say is making a little bit of an impact? Uh, Derek Barnes starting to make a little bit of an impact. All right. I like Jamar Jefferson. When he gets in there, he makes an impact. I like him. When they use him, he's productive. I like him. No, that's what I'm saying, though. If you have another yep. draft like that where you get four starting players out of it, there's only 22 starting you know spots. The interesting to see is to go back, you know, for the last six, seven, eight drafts. Well, because we that. know, I, you know that year to year to year to year how many guys played that season. You missed, you, you had three or four or whatever. Like, like, to your point, trust the process. Yeah, I mean, trust I, Brad Holmes. I am. I, I'm just. I'm just in on it with, with Brad Holmes. I am. Somebody asked a question too, like how much money have they spent on kickers? Because would it would it be equal to what they paid Prater on? Riley Patterson's on a two hundred ninety three thousand dollar deal. Um, this Austin Austin Cyber got hurt. You know, he was eight hundred fifty thousand. So you're at a million and some change. But the thing is, if they get hurt, and depending on how the contract is structured, I don't know how the contracts yeah. are structured. That if you get hurt, they put you on IR. Then you get a split. You don't get that whole eight fifty. Right, and the, and the dudes that were here for like two weeks, they get two weeks of salary. They get, they get two weeks of salary, right? They get two weeks, and if the Lions make the playoffs, they'll get another percentage. Uh, well, actually, they don't get a percentage because they only play two games. Right. If they would play three games, you made the playoffs. They would have got a percentage of half of what we have, whatever we made. And um, yeah, but this is a good talk. This is something we need to get into because if you look at, look at those contracts, they aren't what they seem. And not what they say. Yeah, and, and we'll, we'll certainly get into that. So, Joyk Bell, DMAC, appreciate you guys, Fish and Sawyer as well, and everybody in the YouTube chat thread. Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network. Joyk, let them know. Gang, gang. Oh, see you later. Give me that biscuit. I'm going to bury that biscuit. It's that time of the year again. Time for our second annual Stuff a Studio with Woodward Sports. Last year, Metro Detroit came together to help make the largest single toy donation in Mott Children's Hospital history. This year, we make it even bigger. Stuff a Studio is happening December 13th through the 17th at the Woodward Sports Studios in Birmingham. The children in Mott Children's Hospital fight so hard all year. Now it's up to all of us to help bring a smile to their faces. So while you're out holiday shopping, make sure you pick up an extra toy or two and help us spread some love to Metro Detroit this season. We look forward to seeing you December 13th through the 17th as we stuff our studio with Woodward Sports and Meyer.